Friends, welcome back. We had to use that back flash Friday, even though it's obviously a Saturday, because Marcus, the creator of that amazing intro, has yet to create one for Saturday. By the way, thanks for your suggestions. And before we go over some of those as to what we're going to call Saturday and as people trickle in, Marcus, would you, we have a lot of requests. Apparently, you're becoming quite the item in the chat. So people would like you to sing. And I just hit him up last minute here to come up with something. Do you want to do another song, man? While people sure, are I'll Hell do yeah. one off the record. Me and Travis did with Rick Nelson. It's awesome. uh, called Stubborn, and it's okay. Saturday, so maybe Stubborn Saturdays. I like it. Take your time, brother. Whenever you're ready, I'll throw you on full screen, and you got the floor. Okay, I'm ready. Well, that's me. That's you, bro. Go ahead, dude. I'm, I mean, I'll just uh, I'll mimic <laughs> it over here. Let me okay, you gonna lip sync it? Awesome. All right. Well, you don't have to worry. You don't have to grieve. Because all the people you lost, they're angels here today. I know that this is true. It's what Mama used to say. Don't get stuck in your stubborn ways. Be thankful for the day. Cause life is too precious. One day your heart stops. So take your jug of water and fill it drop by drop. Take care of the children. Let them run and play. Don't get stuck in your stubborn ways. Be thankful for the day. Well, times are good. Like these moments here today. Don't get stuck in your stubborn ways and bow down. All that matters is what's happening right now. So don't get stuck in your stubborn ways. Be thankful for the day. That was gorgeous, dude. Holy shit. I think I like that better than going clear. You got a beautiful voice, man. Thanks. I messed up like three times. Uh, really? I, yeah, I totally. couldn't tell. Totally I messed up in the bridge, but okay. Oh, uh, that's great. I, was a, just a, you know, I haven't performed wow. in so long. I miss performing very so, much. Yeah. I would love, Travis and I love playing together. It's like ecstasy, it's like drugs. I feel you. Yeah, that is my drugs. That was my drugs before Scientology. It's still my drug, my drug of choice. Me so too. That and I acting. appreciate y'all requesting stuff. I put some links up in the channel. You can go check out the Spotify and awesome. the YouTube. Please awesome. check it out. I wrote it, you know, for me, but it's for y'all too. So, give me a link, Marcus, um, at the end, and I'll put them in all the videos so people know where to access your music because I have the YouTube channel up there. But yeah, I, well, it might have got lost in the email. Checks in the mail on that one. Roger that. <laughs> okay, guys. So we have a lot to cover today. We're going to try to keep this at two hours, and we're going to try to have Marcus tell a story from where we left off in the previous two episodes. So to give you some idea of what the hell's going on here, let me add this to the screen. Okay. 
So sorry to keep going over this, but we have new people coming in all the time. And I just want to show you what the channel's about and what's on here and kind of what the new setup is, because we have two weekly podcasts at least so far. So this is the main channel. And if you go here, you can find podcasts, SPTV Live, um, everything from interviewing Aaron Smith Levin to Mark Turry, who's coming on in a couple of days to do part two of this one, the exploring the complicated world of theological stances. We have Thursdays at 2 p.m. with Apostate Alex. This this Thursday has been rescheduled to the next one, and it's called Is Scientology All Bad? Questions Unanswered. That one's going to be intense, guys. Um, I'm really looking forward to that one because, well, I don't want to tell much about that, but just that that one's, like I said, going to be intense. We have Backflash Fridays, which is what we're doing now. And it's kind of a special where on Saturday, once in a while, I'll bring in Marcus and we can discuss uh, more deep dive things, today being his full story. And so far, we've covered everything from his first two uh, stories, you know, uh, part of his story, this, these first two videos, Hard Cell. We went into a pack that's really hard to find uh, and which he used to extort lots of money out of my family. God damn you, Marcus, which I'm still pissed about. Actually, I probably did the, the least amount of regging out of it. I'm just everybody. fucking with you. No, just a point of fact. Like Travis Fair regged enough. your dad more than I did. I was in Melrose. That's why Travis won't come on the show. By the way, he's <laughs> he's in the chat. And Travis, what I was thinking, bro, Travis is brothers with Marcus. And when we talk about uh, his story today, I'm sure he'll come up. But they did everything together. And if you want to come on, brother, I'd love to interview you, you know, give you two hours and we'll go through your story. And then we could have you and Marcus on at the same time because I'd like to fire you questions, you know, about what was going on in both your heads while you that were That would be some this. cool interactions because Travis would. and I, we would uh, often get assigned to go sell books together uh, on Melrose. Awesome. We would do it di different people, but a lot of times they'd send both, just send the twins out because there was an appeal to that for some reason. I don't know. I see. People, people were more willing to talk to us. So we also covered uh, last week, Danny Masterson retrial, ex-Scientology infighting, and what the hell is that? And OSA. Mm. Um, that one was cool, by the way. Just kind of nip that. In wow, the butt we've done a lot so far. Yeah, I know. We just started. Damn, yeah. And then we okay. did selling celebrities to Scientology or se selling Scientology to celebrities. And that will definitely come up more today. But we deep dived into that. This one yesterday, man, we found our stride. Scientology's deadly purification rundown. So this is going to be the theme of the backflash. What we're going to do is try to do more of what we did on this one. Because we're going to pick one subject, I'm going to do my homework, and then we're going to spend an hour um, going through the whole thing. And uh, I thought we covered a lot of ground on that yesterday. So there we go. That's that. And then I also have the uh, series with H.G. Tudor, who's a narcissistic psychopath. We did 11 uh, interviews so far. That's to cover psychopathy. The Raising a Secret Society series, what started this whole channel. Um, there's going to be two new episodes, not two. Let me just explain this real quick, Marcus, because it's been a pain in the ass restarting this channel again. So all the episodes, I'm trying to get everything back up from the original channel, and there's six more episodes from season one. So I'm working on those, going back and re-editing and making them look a hell of a lot better. So there's two episodes that will be up this week that are almost done, and then four more after that. And then finally, the channel will be up to date, and we'll be going into two more episodes on season two and then finally we can do season three and finish the series and then we have other podcasts here that go more into cults cons and conspiracies anything that's not scientology cult clips and interviews if you want to know my life in the cult there's a whole bunch of interviews with that so that's what we're doing here that's the new format and um with that marcus do you want to um Go into uh, we. I guess we can skip. I just wanted to say, my friends, I really appreciate you coming with, with the ideas for the name of uh, Saturday, and we have plenty to choose from. If you want to throw some more in the comments, any ideas after that, that will be helpful. But we have enough where we can choose from that. So before we get into that, Marcus, I just wanted to take up something from yesterday. We covered the purification rundown, everything from starting out with the Danny Masterson trial and how weed gets you involved in Scientology up to Tampa Brad, uh, Scientology's viewpoint, reviews of Narconon, Arrowhead, et cetera. We covered everything on that. We got an email yesterday that I wanted to um, to read real quick. Yes. The, Which was really powerful. Because we got inflow. We did. We got inflow. That's flow. amazing. Um, okay, Isn't that so more than we could hope for? Like These come in all the time, dude. I just don't share. Um, I don't share them because... Um, because they're not necessarily pertinent to what we're talking about today. That I understand, but this is a good one. Yep. 
So what's the difference between a real rehab and the rehab that we showed yesterday with Narcanon that cost $30,000 and was atrocious? And this gal wrote this uh, yesterday. I'm not, her name's Barbara. Um, Barbara, if you want me to say your full name, I will in the next one, but I'm keeping um, your identity um, hidden. It's the message that counts. Hi, Doug. I happened upon your site because of Aaron et al. That's Aaron Smith Levin. I have no connection to Scientology or any Scientologist. I'm merely an interested observer until this moment. I just watched your video about purification and Narcanon, and I felt compelled to send this email as this is an area in which I actually have some knowledge. I am an addict and spent six weeks in real rehab facility in 2018. I'm a Canadian, and the facility I was in was government-funded, I paid exactly $200 for the whole program. Now contrast $200 with $30,000 for Narcanon. Among other things, we had three buffet meals a day prepared by cooks trained in proper diet requirements for drug addicts. The meals were excellent. Because it is common for addicts to be malnourished, we were encouraged to eat as much as we wanted. We also had access to snack area where we can make toast or have some fresh food, etc. I simply cannot overstate the importance of taking proper care of your physical body when transitioning out of active addiction. It is, in my experience, as important as the therapy side. In addition to the carefully planned nutrition meals, our well-being was addressed through yoga, swimming, nature walks, etc. Our facility was clean, spacious, modern, well-equipped, well-decorated, and serene, the opposite of what we described in Narconon yesterday, particularly in Manhattan Beach. We were never without, here's another difference between Scientology's scam Narconon and a real facility. We were never without access to medical doctors, psychiatrists, instructors, counselors, etc. That they do not offer at Narconon. In fact, they're anti-psychiatry. I'm giving specific details to prove a point. These positive reviews you read about Narconon Arrowhead were far too vague to be believable, as in, I made friends. Exactly. It's exactly what I was thinking when I was reading those reviews which means actually nothing at all. Friends are a side effect of rehab, not a goal. If you could please find a way to work this message into one of your videos, we're doing that right now, for those lost parents trying to find a way to help, help their drug addled kids. Stay away from, from for-profit facilities, get very specific details about the services offered, and please, please, please run as fast as you can from any place offering a cure. And Narconon offers, I believe, a, an 80% cure, which is impossible. That is an enormous red flag, a very sure sign that you're being sold the proverbial snake oil. A real rehab is designed to give you tools to help you get better, not fix you. I know I'm overly wordy. No, you're not. And I'm sorry for that. You just happen to hit on a subject, which I feel very strongly. So there you go, guys. There's We're not experts, um, but that's, that's some advice on what to look out for if you're looking for a real rehab in contrast with the bullshit that we showed you yesterday. Harm reduction. Harm reduction, you know? Like that's what that email screams to me is uh, consumer in, consumer information and harm reduction because you, that girl, whenever we went over that video yesterday, I almost started crying because I was thinking yeah. of my daughter and uh, I can't even, if, I can't even imagine, you know, like, and it could have happened bro. to, it could have happened, could have happened to, get, to you. Right. Right. And your right. mom would be grieving. That's what right. would you Marcus, let's say this is a perfect place to pick up the story. So, we're going to give a brief recap in the 20 minutes or whatever, but we're going to move it up to Ventura Mission when when the action uh, really kicks up in Marcus's story. But um, at the very beginning, what got you into it was the hallucinations and the drug problems that you were having. So when you found um, Clear Body, Clear Mind, again, we're not going to cover it all because we already covered it in the first two videos. But briefly, if you would come across that material from what the gal said in the email, versus what you came what you found with the Dianetics bullshit, you know, the clear body, clear mind. Would that have had any effect on you? When you went to your mom to tell her about this program and she didn't know it was Scientology related, did she question the high cost? Did she notice any of the red flags that no, Barbara see, the just thing, pointed out? The, well, the thing is, is that we did our our purification rundown in a mission. I see. And and it costs Fourteen hundred dollars compared to thirty thousand, and this right. is back in two thousand and one, two thousand and two. That's a lot of money, and uh, insurance did not cover it. It was an out-of-pocket expense, so it was one of these, you know, rich kids getting fucked up on drugs and finding this Narconon thing and being and thinking that that is a better solution than 
going to see a doctor and maybe potentially facing some of the consequences of their actions legally and, and, and otherwise, right? So, uh, yeah, it was $1,400. That's, it That's wasn't, good. it wasn't, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot, but it wasn't like, oh my God, because I had been to, uh, to, I'd been That's in, right. I'd been in, uh, uh, I'd been into a outpatient facility rehab called, uh, oh, uh, I forget the name of it, but it was when I was 13 or 14, uh, uh, charter hospital is what it was called. And then I was again, uh, at, when I turned 17, after I was emancipated, my mother was concerned about my drug use because I was dealing and selling and doing lots of drugs to help pay for my, I mean, I was emancipated. I was, uh, you know, living in a trailer with a friend of mine and we were both selling drugs and Right, doing right, it. It was right. From it was leftover connections from high school that I met and people that I met outside of the high school, like in Houston and areas like that. I did a lot of drug stuff that uh, you, you would never assume careful what you say. Scientology, yeah, yeah. watching. I don't give a shit, man. Whatever, man. I mean, at this point, <laughs> statute of limitations on all of it. But hey, man. Um, yeah, the uh, the cost wasn't that much okay so you weren't your mom wasn't sending you to narcan on the cost no. and and like you said you were looking for something different because you already tried shit so you wouldn't necessarily um see any of the seen any of those red flags and again it wasn't yeah, connected to scientology right your mom didn't flip over the back of the book and go wait a minute son what's this dianetic shit really the 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 reason i didn't want to go with medical route and go the mm -hmm. the 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 official like uh an actual rehab was because yeah. my experiences were so bad in those uh, in those other two places the first one i admitted myself to the second one my mother like i said had me committed and, and how she did that i don't it was through family connections and shit too so like she, i was arrested at work it was very humiliating and um i was brought to the seventh to the tenth floor and they gave me ect treatment oh shit, um dude. i signed off on it you have to but they said if you sign off on this will let you out in 72 hours for sure wow. like in, within three days like, i got to get back to work because i'm 17 and i'm 17. really barely hanging on financially i gotta be working and uh also i was selling weed on the side so um which was a big deal back in the day right oh it's yeah not like man. it is today. I, and i was selling a lot of weed like i didn't even know the people that were coming to my door you know i had a system where they just drop the money and i do dead drops but uh, the neighbors caught, they were like, there's too many cars going over there. I got greedy and, you know, I was starting to sell, you know, a half a pound every two You weeks. sure the statue of limitations is covered? Because like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. watch us. Okay. Just want I you to cover your ass. Fuck. All right. Amen. Amen. And I, even if they are watching, you know, I don't care. Amen. Fuck them. Um, yeah. So uh, the, in the end of that whole thing, like I ended up with the, uh, uh, a misdemeanor because when they, when they raided the house, it was just stems and seeds. So, uh, that I wanted to go somewhere where it was not medical official, whatever. Like I wanted mm -hmm. to handle it in a different way. Yeah. I didn't want to get shocked because I remember the, the, the night that they did that, uh, they, they give you medicine before you go to sleep and then they come in and they give you medicine through an IV it, this is what happened to me anyways. They gave me medicine through an IV. And then I barely remember shit except this bit that they put in your mouth. And so the, you don't go, so you don't bite your tongue off. Yeah. No. So you don't bite your tongue off when they shock you. Yeah. And, and the dude that was, I do remember vaguely the guy saying, man, I'm sorry. You know, I'm going to have to hit you again because I was like, I was so doped up that, uh, and they, they, they do give you a lot of, uh, drugs to, you know, <laughs> to keep you uh, from from feeling all this electrical current going straight into the, the there's these two little shit, things that go right yeah. here on your on your freaking temple. So you can I just interject real quick, Marcus? You experienced the number one phobia in Scientology, which is ECT. How yeah. on earth, before we get into the Scientology story, did that not immediately disqualify you from staff? And or even being a Scientologist. Uh, I don't know. How I did had that to not come up. Well, it did come up when I got to Ventura. So we'll get to that. Okay. I really can't wait to hear that because I know their stance on that shit. Yeah. I had an aunt named Aunt Susie who 
had some ECT and she wasn't, she was just allowed to do There's basic immediate out call, you know, and out call is. means you cannot do a service even if you are paying. There are certain services they will not even accept, even if you got a million dollars, they're like, no, no, we're not taking you. And Colonel Brock, yeah, man, exactly. I mean, I would agree. Who the hell wants to do ECT, right? I, maybe it has its time and place, but that that sounds pretty freaking brutal. You know, they're also yeah. right about overdrugging kids. Hubbard had, he played on the conspiracy a lot, and he played on the fact that we overdrug our kids. Rather than going to the source of the problem and deal with the mental problem or the emotional problem, just give them a fucking drug. So yeah, I would say absolutely that occurs. And Tom Cruise got a lot of uh, quote unquote redemption lately for going off on Matt Lauer when he quote unquote turned out to be right. But that doesn't take a genius to figure out that perhaps we overdrug our kids and electrocuting someone might not be the best handling. So that's just another way that the cult kind of plays on people where they bring them in with some things that they'll agree with and then they um, tell them about Xenu 10 years later. Um, lady Veritas is that's what's wrong. Are no, you no, 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 I, wrong lady. I meant Lady Pamela because she said her mom, two ladies, her mom was uh did ECT when she was pregnant for her. And I and oh, I wrote, wow. Is that what's wrong with you? Question mark, question mark. I'm joking with you. That's uh, a terrible joke, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it, I apologize it made me laugh. for Marcus's behavior. Made me laugh, probably made her laugh too. So, um, <clears throat> thankfully, we have an ethics section on Discord to throw them into. <laughs> God damn it, you guys, you can probably hear the freaking construction going on in the background, right? Let me hear this. See, she says, I always used to say that's what's wrong with me, lol, she did. Hang on, hang on, let me hear. Okay, I think I we have it. people doing construction, like, on the house or whatever. I can totally hear it. So I'll try to, I'll be muting Marcus as you talk, just so okay. you know. Okay, so, so let's, let's, Um, I think we covered all the preliminary crap. So you're 17, and you, um... Just pick it up from there, man. So yeah, yeah. So, find so the book, your jumping, you. jumping back forward into 2001 from okay. what, 1998, um, the drugs, man, and my issues that I was having. So we'd already talked about, I went to the mission. I got the uh, money for the pure for my mom. I go and I uh, stay at this little econo lodge thing. It's like a weekly, uh, a weekly uh, rate and uh, start getting routed on what they call routing on, which required me to see a doctor, which was uh, Rohit ID, still practicing in Baton Rouge, works in the emergency services, um, and uh, and uh, Rondi ID, who is his wife, who's a nurse practitioner, I believe, um, and. You know, between those two, they worked at the mission, so they could immediately clear anybody to uh, to to do the purif, and they would clear anybody basically. Um, and there's some 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 guys that we were in the purif with Travis and I, older men, some very you know like close to close to the end, and uh, they're like, "Oh yeah, you're fine." And I remember this guy Jim was like, "Yeah, I'm I, constantly in and out of the song." He's like, "I'm not doing this. Y'all are gonna kill me if I do this." <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we also went through the, the course room stuff with Dominic and how I almost wanted to throw him through a door. Right. And, right, right. Um, you know, after, uh, you know, Travis showed up and, 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 uh, and it's really you say my story, but this is a story that involves not just me, but my brother and not just my brother, but my estranged brother. You know, we have different last names. That's can a whole other fucking some, story. Is that too long of a story to get into? Yeah, Marcus? but I can I summarize it. Okay, I can please. summarize it. So, like, mind. my my name is Marcus Lee Sawyer, my legal name, and his legal name is Travis Edward McGee. And the, uh, we did not know each other until 1995 when I was 14. And I had a band, and we had distributed a tape, and there was a uh, a number to call for booking a girl called it was uh the neighbor of a girl who uh knew travis and 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 uh the girl heard my voice on the phone thought that her neighbor who had come over to borrow the phone was using her, her phone to talk to a boy she had been interested in and talking Jesus, to. I had to, are you fucking kidding me you no. said you could give a summary of this shit. this is the summary okay, okay? 
okay, this is the bad. fucking summary. Sorry for cutting your comp. Go ahead. So Daniela, uh, uh, with a little bit of coercing, I'm like, look, this is a crazy story. I know you don't, this is fucking nuts, but like, that's my brother, not me. And she's like, I don't believe you hung up, whatever. So I convince her to give me the number. I call, I talk to Travis's mother and, uh, we end up meeting shortly after. So we met when I was 14 and he was 15. All right. So fast forward six months, they moved to Jackson, Mississippi. Fast forward to past the point of 17, where we we're just talking about, and Travis had moved back to Louisiana and met his wife, Destiny. Fast forward past two, uh, to 2001, I'm in Nashville and he's in Jackson. Uh, I come down from Nashville with this problem. I go to the Dynetics Center. I get the Purif sign up. And then I talk to him on the phone and tell him what I'm doing. And he's like, man, I think I might ought to do the same thing. And uh, I don't recall. You have to ask him, like, what the sequence of events was per precisely but uh mom ended up or ira ended up somebody ended up paying for it uh his ira's your dad right ira's my stepfather stepfather now i, I can't get into the i, I can't understand. summarize all of that totally I but understand. um yeah but we covered we, that already in the first travis and i have the same father and the same mother but we did not grow up together okay but we did come of age together and you are so you are technically real brothers no we're that's him and i are all uh that we have like that's our only sibling our only 100 percent whatever sibling we have lots of brothers I have would they call brothers we are you we're like biological brothers or your biological we're brothers. biological brothers through and through it's only that's when... what makes your story so trippy marcus because you guys were kind of like separated and you hooked up when you got into scientology so how did you that was a great summary by the way sorry to interrupt how did you no guys kind of separate then and uh, and your life and not grow up together and only meet in scientology Is... oh you mean prior yeah well, that has to do with uh, the domestic uh, violence stuff with my stepfather. With Ira. And there was a lot of aggravated assaults. There were attempts on Travis's life before he was even alive, before he was even out of the womb. And not, not just on him, really? but my father and my mother as well. Um, so, And then they separated you two because of that, because of Ira? Well... When we say they, it was a, it was one of those things. They didn't want the law involved. It wanted a family matter to be solved and the families knew each other and there were, there was business involved. So it was like, you know, uh, my mother played this really was in this really precarious position. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and his, and Travis's adopted family were also on the sort of the social outside circle of all of that. Okay. And we're in an opportunity or had an opportunity where his his adopted parents were trying to conceive and couldn't. And so while this was going on, they're like, well, we need to make an adoption happen fast because this, you know, these assaults are happening and there's danger, but it's not being reported. None of it was being reported. But, because uh, you were afraid of getting the shit kicked out of you by Ira, right? Didn't he didn't I wasn't you so even much alive. that you wouldn't report it? I wasn't even alive. Oh, this is before about you were born. Okay. Yeah. So Travis is a bit older than you. This is why we were separated because the, there was concern that Ira would hurt Travis. I see. And he did hurt Travis before he was born in the womb. Got punched in the head. Oh my nine, God. At nine months gestation. He's and got yet, a mark on his forehead. I always wonder if that's fucking Ira's knuckle because I've been hit by that Jesus knuckle. And it sure as hell looks Christ, like a, an Ira's knuckle right on his head. And it fucks with me, you know? I feel you, brother. And Fuck you know what Scientology me. would say that? They would run that out as an engram. Anything that happens to you when you're in the womb. Sure. Like what happened to Travis. And I bet you Travis has thought of That's this sort of I thing. Wanna hear him. I want to hear yeah. what you have to say about that. <laughs> Travis, if you're in the chat, man, and you want to you know, throw, throw up some comments, I'll throw them up. Because did you ever do any di you know, Dianetic auditing on that, Travis, you know, about what happened with that? I mean, because I had to bring up all sorts of shit in the womb that my parents supposedly did to me. They right. <laughs> Right. Which is ridiculous, Marcus. How much? How how can we remember what's in our womb? But according to Crowley, well, you but know, something that was like his philosophy that yeah. you can go back to basic, basic, and remember your. Um, who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll find out. Maybe we'll find out that that is the case. But at this point, we don't really fucking know. I don't discount that it might not be either. But the way that Scientology handles those, it has a tendency. Oh, more they have to they're certain false about it. memories rather than actually bringing out real data. They're also right? certain about it all. Exactly. That's a great fucking point. So and to by summarize, the way, I, that's why Travis okay. and I weren't 
I got it. Growing up to understand that. Which is a trip that you guys come together and bond. But I'm the one who was and, born and, and, and 18 months cult. later and then got okay. to be, a, you know, experience what Travis might have experienced. I don't think it was anywhere near as bad as it could have been, but it wasn't a picnic, man. Yeah, your your stepfather sounds like a real piece of work, man. I'm sorry you He's had still, to do You that. know, it's it's sad, but it, 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 unfortunately to this day is still uh, a thing, but uh yeah so moving on from that right like uh the we just to summarize real quick so you a lot of summaries yeah but this is important what you brought up because we covered the domestic violence in the first two videos and you pointed out i thought rightfully so that you don't have to just be an abusive you don't have to come from an abusive family to join a cult you know the book that was dropped off that you guys know about that saved my life was called combating cult mind control by steve hassan Steve was a Mooney and he grew up in a great family. He just got conned in by some hot chick one day and he was in a transitional phase, uh -huh. which is a lot of, which is when people can get caught. So you don't have to grow up in a situation like Marcus. You guys know my family background. I wasn't beat physically, which is often a lot easier to see than the psychological manipulation that my parents were running on me. Hence, I ran to the cult to kind of get that father figure in L. Ron Hubbard that I wasn't getting at my house. Sounds pathetic, but it's true. So you don't need domestic violence like Marcus, but that was your background. And then we were up to the Purif, yep. and then you've explained how you kind of got separated at birth, so to speak. Yep. So you're still in Baton Rouge at this time before we get to Ventura when you're doing the Purif? Well, yeah, we're in Baton Rouge during the Purif. And you're yeah. 17? In 2000, late 2001, 2002, uh, because by the time, uh, Travis may have to correct me, but I believe it was 2002, <laughs> um, 2002, I'm laughing at Melissa Neal's comment, you know, I know. We're back good. on the fags. So, can I, can I say no, something on that real quick? No, they're fine. Not, they're I don't fine. want to encourage people to smoke and I, I have to take this up because, um, because <laughs> Colonel's so funny. I haven't heard that in, in a minute. Yeah. These are hundreds, by the way. I, I, Get the cheapest cigarettes known to man, and these are called um, what are they? Uh, I don't know. They're these really cheap cigarettes. Like it's not for taste; it's just uh, for price. And they are hundreds. But uh, please, Marcus, continue. Mm, okay. Oh, right. And Clearwater Chad, remember the famous quote from L. Ron Hubbard, Marcus: "Not smoking enough is bad for you." Mm, no, I don't remember that quote. Okay, that is an actual quote from Hubbard. I do remember some of the uh, uh, history of man stuff, like the volcanoes and like, that's why we smoke and shit like that. <laughs> that's right. He says in one of these lectures, this is what Chad's referring to, is that he has this whole justification as to, because Hubbard was a, a huge chain smoker. You know, he'd have aides walking around that would carry his ashtray so that he can immediately put out one cigarette and light another one. And he has this whole justification as to, this really diluted way where there's not enough radiation in your body. So if you smoke nicotine, it'll put radiation in your body and that protect you from the upcoming world war two that's going to happen. And all, you know what I mean? It came yeah. out of the cold, the cold era anyway. So we got you on the pier. If you're still at, yeah, so it was 2002, Travis said, uh, he had answered. Okay. So, uh, Excellent. in 2002, uh, he was 22 or 23. So, uh, that's important to mention too. So I would have been 21, 22, he was 22, 23. And uh, and you're what 67, 68 now? How old yeah, are you now? I'm I'm actually yeah, that's 67. I think that's right. No, seriously, do you mind saying your age? I'm 42. The secret okay. to life, the universe, good, and everything. Brother. Hell yeah, looking good. Yes, yeah, we're doing SPTV. Okay, I'm only so in it for the money. Why else would we be doing it? We're rolling in the cash. <laughs> Boats and hose, man. So, <laughs> um, Trav <laughs> finished his. Uh, <laughs> smoking oh i love it i love this vibe we got going on okay yeah. so uh boats and too. hose and um tra and, and 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 the throes of uh of being in the purif so travis and i did our purif uh he he finished in a like i want to say a month or six weeks probably more like six weeks and um and then he was doing coursework and he went back to mississippi if i'm not mistaken I stayed and was continuing to go through these blah, 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 blah you know, just never ending uh, case supervisor uh, uh, programs, extra stuff, extra things like extra locationals. Dexter Manuel, who was the lead auditor there at the time, 
the highest class auditor there Dexter at the time. Manual. Dexter Manual. Yeah. Interesting name. He, uh, I'm surprised that my brain pulled it up, nice. but, um, yeah, he would, uh, he would be doing the locationals on me after, after the four hour to six hour. Cause I did sometimes up to six hours of, I'm of sorry to interject the locational is what we covered yesterday in those, in the video that I showed you from Scientology, where you simply touch objects to put you in present time. Please continue. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, the, it was it was it, my case was particularly troubling for some of the staff I because bet. whenever you know especially for other pcs pre-clears i'm who, surprised you weren't a liability marcus with how bad your drug case was yeah no one wanted to do the purif at a certain point because they're like that guy's been on it for how long now um and i was having all kinds of ethics problems like i went and saw a prostitute whenever i was really at, yeah and they're like is there any miss withholds <laughs> and i'm like wait a minute what, what are you talking about and they're like no there's something else there's something else what what did you do i'm like okay i saw a fucking prostitute um and how did they wrote, wrote all of that? that well that was there that was when they Holy really shit. taught me tpfe time place form and event right those are overts and withholds right so and then they're like, write it out in every single fucking detail that you can possibly imagine. Yep. Right. And uh, <laughs> so I wrote, I'm like, man, that's fucked up. Because you're new to this, right? Yeah. You're yeah, like, yeah. Why, why are you violating my boundaries? Right. Yeah. So, so, and wow. it was, it was uh, Laura, uh, no, no, Kelly Keeney, who was married to Neil Keeney who is a nuclear physicist, by the way, who was a Scientologist Great at the time. Great point, by the way. We're going to cover that later. Right, real uh, quick, your girlfriend, could you please get her out of the chat here? Because I'm not sure she wants to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's just now finding He's out about this. She's just making up that story. Uh, <laughs> I just made Cynthia. it. I made it up. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Guys, there's an ongoing joke with with Monica, which I'm sure we'll talk about in this story, and Femme Fatale is his, oh, his yeah, girlfriend totally. uh, piping in with comments, which just has us cackling endlessly. Femme, Femme Morte, Dead Girl, aka oh, nice. Dead Girl, yeah. Um, so the they had me write this thing up, but the uh, but but not not without a fight, right? Like I was, really? yeah, I was like, what do you mean? You want me to write down every little thing? It you didn't occur to you that that was a way to relieve the problem and to be honest and ethical with them. You hadn't crossed over that line yet to trusting them. Uh, it didn't seem reasonable to you that you should no. get off yet. What you're no, okay. right. no, not until after, not until yep. after. Right. So once they finally browbeat me into writing all this shit down, and and I, I you know, I. I because they won't take no for an answer. That's right. right. And I want to complete my purification rundown. Kelly, or uh, yeah, Ke uh, yeah, Keeney, Kelly Keeney, um, and Neil Keeney. Um, she was the executive director of the mission at the time. And so she was like, you know, the station manager, essentially, if you're talking about a radio station or the head person in charge. So um, the amount of uh yeah I, I don't know how to put it but she we did she did have me read a ton of references this was probably two three months in this was after travis had left so uh and word clear a whole bunch of this stuff which at that point i'd already been doing and this is all leading up to them recruiting me and and travis got it and Real quick, did Travis already get through the PRF? Because you said he left, so he'd already actually done the PRF. At yeah, this he point? he okay. had completed it, and he felt and you're better. Still on it. He said he felt better, um, and and cleaner, like yeah. kind of like fresh. So did, I. so did I. Um, and and I wanted that too. You know, I never got it. I still feel all fucked up all the time. Marcus B, but, th there's no such, that's where I really want to have Travis on. I'd like to hear his experiences, especially with what he brought up yesterday. Because I didn't want to leave people with the idea that everybody should go sign up for the pure of I got electrified. I felt cleaner. I felt everything that you guys saw the success story too. But it was just because they and we already talked about it towards the end. They basically just electrify you. They beat the shit out of your body and uh, fill you with uh, vitamins. 
where I kind of lost it, Marcus, but I felt electrified. I felt like I could see clear. I remember driving home the day that I attested to the Pura for the first time, and I felt like my vision and everything was heightened. But then you come down like everything in Scientology, and you're literally back to square one. But it, I think that that has to do more with the brainwashing and what you're actually doing than any kind of technology or getting rid of toxins from your body as we, because, you know, that's actually apparently scientifically not possible the toxins you know the lsd flashbacks that you have they don't stay in your fatty tissue and come back as acid trips but then how do you explain like travis and me uh saying i feel bubbly i can i can my vision is increased what's your take on that by the way because things do happen in the pura my take on what specifically on so you never got the wins that travis and i are talking about where you felt he described and, yeah travis described feeling like he did when he was a kid like before he had ever done drugs like you, there was this clean slate feeling that he described that was a feeling that he never had or hadn't had since he had prior since, yeah since since the first time or before he had done drugs and that's what i was after i was like i want to wipe the slate clean it doesn't work like that you know so um, the uh, the OW write up became uh, a th the like I started writing up all kinds of things and they were a lot of it had to do with the domestic violence and upbringing exactly. that I had. Uh, I started writing OWs about torturing animals, right? Had you done that? Oh yeah, my father, my stepfather, and I. That was a, a as far as I knew, that was a pastime. That was something that that we did together. Do you and, think that came out from the abuse, Marcus? You mentioned the cutting and you mentioned torturing animals. Those yeah, are usually yeah, yeah. signs These, of a, a, serial, a future nuts. serial killer. I Oh, totally. Totally. And how do you know I'm not? But um, Wow. Like, friends, we're going to have to end, end the stream. <laughs> um, I'm going to get Marcus out of here. He's definitely giving Osa too much information. Oh, I appreciate you being open, man. This is really, really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's important. I, I feel it like is it's important. important. I do but, too. Uh, the, so, so I went total ham on, which means hard as a motherfucker. I, I did. I, I, <laughs> I chewed into that bit that they put out, you know, once I, the prostitute yeah. thing, I was like, oh yeah, okay, whatever. I can forgive myself for that. What about all this other shit? You know, what about, you know, hanging cats upside down and spray painting them and beating them? And what about torturing lizards and taping them to the ceiling and taping lizards? them to the fan? Uh, Tell me you didn't do anything to dogs. No, no, okay. just cats okay. mostly. And then like, we had these things uh, where I grew up called Indian chores. And there's only two people I know of that have referred to them as Indian chores. But, uh, you know, I, if if a cat would have a litter that no one could take care of, like in a very poor community, and it's just animals everywhere, you get an Indian chore and you go, they just hand you a bag and you go throw it off the bridge. So I Sorry, guys, if we're, we give a trigger warning next yeah, time. Yeah, trigger warning. We got some cat lovers in here. So oh, I, he's just I feel his, absolutely he, fucking terrible. I, I know I you do, things. and I appreciate you sharing that. I, I just want to tell people life. that. I've destroyed this, innocent life. I have not only done that, but I have made it suffer to the very end of its life. You know, that's fucked. So I started writing all this stuff down, and I felt damn. a lot of relief from it. I bet. I felt a shitload of relief from those things. and um. And so I was very motivated. Like uh, it actually was a positive thing for me to handle that. I was doing it. And so, you know, in therapy, uh, you don't do it like this. And there's a reason why. And, and also, we all know it's a coercive thing that's going on here in Scientology. Yep. So all of that, despite the benefits, is still being used to use you in some form or fashion to use you to get money out of you to use your persons as a as a human being to go out and do their bidding whatever they can do but with me that i believe that they saw a young professional who was doing extremely well in nashville that they could then transplant to melrose with pretty minimal uh well there's some risk with me i'm a risky person that comes into sure play at ventura that. and they knew that for absolutely because you're getting off these over some withholds too and get telling them your right, background right that's that's really probably part of how they're saying how much of a risk is he 
right? right. And also, lady, yeah, exactly. You know, we're just getting off over some with holes, and it's exactly like Catholic <laughs> confession. Of course, you're going to feel better. Yeah. And that's bonding him to the cult because I bet you felt tremendous telling people oh, yeah. these things that you yeah, wouldn't yeah. tell anybody else. And they were like supportive and they're like, man, you know. Yeah, they acknowledge you. Yeah. They don't judge you. And she was my first ethics officer, the ED of uh, uh, Baton Rouge, Kelly mm. Keeney. Okay. Uh, her and and then she passed me down to uh, to Rondi, which is uh, Rohit's the, the the medical doctor on staff is his wife. She's a nurse practitioner, and they're both tremendously. All these people were tremendously intelligent. Okay, <laughs> so they know what the fuck they're how I, whether or not they know what they're doing, they know how they're doing it with the tech. Right. So um, they sort of aligned my trajectory. Um, and I was very much telling them like in no uncertain terms that I'm not staying here. I'm not going to be a staff member here. I'm going to go make music with my brother and Travis. And I did make a trip to a town called Hattiesburg where we met an amazing musician, uh, through a, a mutual friend. And we, and we, we were so infatuated with the music we were making that we both decided we would move there. Uh, not just me and him, but our friend Jeremy as well, who's a musician. And so that's where we, that's where I went after I completed my purification run. And that would have been 2003, uh, in, in early 2003. So around winter time, probably l before Christmas. Um, and it took about six months, right, Marcus? You're still in Baton Rouge. And yeah. can, can I ask you what, being on it for so long, what finally happened that gave you the win that allowed you to quote unquote pass it? Do you remember? Was there anything specific? Or were they just like, it was so non so fucking long, just it make, so, make something up? That's basically what it was. Really? Yeah, it's like, I mean, looking back on it, yes. At the you time, you never had I the had wins to, that Travis had, and you didn't start to no, see clearly. No, but I had and, to believe that I did. I had to believe that I, I did. I understand that. You know, I was like, this, it, it, I will say this. The, the hallucinations uh, were Subsided. very much diminished or I did not notice them. In my condition, HPPD, really what it comes down to is whether or not you're paying attention to the hallucinations, not whether they're happening or not. Like I hallucinate all the time, but it's a matter of am I noticing it? Do so, you think that Scientology was taking your attention away from that with their drills? Course. And that's all yeah, that yeah. was basically happening. Yeah, that, that therapists, multiple therapists have already confirmed that that and, and said that that's a distraction therapy. They use yes. that, you know, they use that to yeah. help trauma victims and shit. So, um, yeah, I told them I was not going to be staying and they didn't like that answer. But I really didn't care. We moved. Travis's dad helped us with a moving truck, which was awesome. It was a massive truck. We had more room than we needed. We, we were able to move all of my stuff, all of his stuff, and all of Jeremy's stuff into a house uh, on Melba Street that is now burned down, which was weird because uh, <laughs> uh, the timing uh, in 2019 when I saw the house burned down. You didn't but, do it, did you? No. Uh -uh. And if you I think did, I, don't say it live. No, no. I, it, it, it was weird. whole other thing. But maybe Osa did. I don't know. Um, I have pictures of it burnt down to the ground and it was the week that I was going there. It had just burned down. It's like weird. And, and I hadn't seen it in years. So, um, the, uh, the house that we lived in, we were jamming. We were, uh, we opened up a, a Buffalo wild wings, Travis and I, we worked in the kitchen. We were making money. We were struggling to pay the bills and we were making music as much as we could. But I kept getting phone calls from Dominic, Monica, and this guy named Jim Hamry and Kathy oh, yes. Steiner and even Tom Steiner and Tom was calling you too. Everyone, they were wow. it's love bombing, man. They're like, wow. you guys, you guys are talented. You guys are awesome. We need you out here. You can come out here and do music. Um, we're opening a new mission. It's different than the one in Baton Rouge because you know uh, we know you don't like that stuffy atmosphere. Like this is going to be an open sort of venue where we want to have open mic nights and we want you to or they specifically wanted me to put on the or open mic nights i had equipment to bring like we you know but the thing was is we didn't have the money to move so uh I, that was a big you know brick wall but jim hamry what does he do to brick walls Jim's and could, I told you can sell ice to an Eskimo and I'd melt into his reg cycles. We need to get your, we haven't even brought up Monica again. Your girlfriend's still trolling the comments. dude. <laughs> she, 
She just never heard. Much We're gonna about get Monica. to Monica, Cynthia. Just relax. Yeah. So. So they were all calling me and they're all trying to figure out how to get us out there. All right. Meanwhile, we yeah. got our, my roommate, uh, me and Travis's roommate, who's suffering from uh, this is a part of the story that I have never told. OK, so this is really exclusive. It's not please also give a trigger warning because there's a lot of things in your story. If, OK, if anything yeah, comes up, I mean, just let this, people know yeah. it's not nothing's going to be worse than what I've said about the animals. Well, so. there is one other part where your extraction from the cult oh yeah at the very out. end yeah, yeah yeah um so uh what, what was i saying oh you were doing so good okay so the hamry and the monicas they're calling oh yeah you. yeah persuasive so I, registrars they really want to get you out to ventura yeah so i told him i had no money we had no money we had no money no money no money no money no money no money no yep. honey no money, no, money, no, no problem, honey. said Jim, right? <laughs> we can handle that, Marcus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, oh, yeah. And, you know, he talked about Larry Krogh. He talked about uh, your dad. He talked about other people oh, really? who were in he the... talked about my dad, too? I'm just that? saying he probably did because he okay. would say, oh, we have donors. We, don't worry about the money. We'll right. get it taken care of. Of course. You know? mm -hmm. and, uh, but, but we need to make sure that, you know, uh, everything is blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, Jim is like probably running a three ring circus over there at Ventura mission, trying to make all this happen. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and in addition to uh, dealing with Kathy, probably you, your case, your dad's case, yep. everyone's case on, on, on uh, public lines, because Jim had to be briefed on all of that stuff. So this, mm -hmm. you know, you, you were in the mix. And at this point, almost like we were in each other's outside orbit. I know we barely point. missed each other. And uh, yeah, we absolutely, absolutely 2003. So um, uh, Jim secures the funding. Uh, I talked to Travis. I remember Travis being very iffy about it. And I also remember really? our roommate, Jeremy, who had never been able to pay his rent ever and had like, he got a job at Subway, but he just slept all day. And uh, yeah, look, Travis said, yep, because I said I, was, I wasn't going unless they paid for our move. Wouldn't so they have I, paid for their move? No problem. Didn't he handle, you know, Jim and the, the Scientology church, they had an answer for that, right? We'll pay for it. Didn't they say that? Yes. Yes. So that handled Travis, right? So that was Jim's handle on Travis. Um, and me too, you know, I mean, yeah, you didn't have the money. I didn't have fucking money. So, um, uh, and Jeremy, our, Jeremy Sullivan, our friend was coming with us. He, you know, uh, our, our friend that we met, that we moved to Hattiesburg for, I'd given him a copy of uh, Fundamentals of Thought to let him read because I told him I said, "Look, man, we're going to be going to California, and uh, and and we're going to be doing some music out there. And if you could come, that'd be awesome." And he's this is after he's read Fundamentals of Thought. What he told me when he gave me the copy back because he did read it. Mm -hmm. um, it was basic. I can't. I don't know the exact quote that he said. But he said, "This is rubbish. This is uh, really I like trash." He said, this is absolute garbage. Wow. Um, I thought that was one of the better of the Scientology. Me books. too. I mean, out of all of them, like the, if you're going to give a book to somebody to read about uh, for L. Ron Hubbard and you're, you're like into Scientology, fundamentals it is, of thought is a It is trash, thing. though. I do agree with that. I just didn't know that at the time. And fundamentals oh, but, of thought would be one Will, of the easiest you know, gradients. That guy that we were playing with, he's a fucking like he was he's so ahead of everything and he's a genius. So. Uh, musically and, and in many other ways as well. So uh, it was actually pretty emotional for him uh, because, you know, years later, I, I, I don't know if this is a fact or not, but, you know, I'll just say this. He was very upset and very let down by us leaving because we all felt we had something really special. And the name of the band was called, it was something really superfluous and over the top the Grand Utopian Musical Brotherhood Orchestra. That sounds like a cult in itself. It really kind of felt like one. And, wow. and it shortens to gumbo. So it was kind of like oh, cool. G period, U period, and it was Southern. And we actually had a, a cool. studio that, because uh, like I said, I was a young professional and I was connected and meeting all kinds of people. There was a guy that owned the Sound Kitchen. If you look up that website, it's a huge Nashville studio now. Back then it wasn't like it is now. But they, the owner sold it. But the guy that owned the place had heard a demo that I'd sent him after just a couple of weeks of us playing. He's like, man, y'all need to come into the studio 
And I was like, well, we need some more material first. And he was like, well, y'all could just probably come in. But I was young and I didn't know how to handle that. I wanted to come in with a, an album. So we never did. We ended up leaving and we can't. And, how did and they get you out there, man? What was the what was the trigger? Just uh, simply giving you the money to move and prom did they make any promises about your musical career? What was motivating you to want to combine Scientology and your musical career? Was it just to get out to LA? Well, I can only speak for myself here because there's three people involved. There's me and okay. Travis and Jeremy. So for me, oh. um it was it was a chance to go on an adventure with my brother and play some music with my brother. And it was an opportunity to maybe expose some of the music that, that we, that I did and wrote, which at the time, honestly, was there crap. it goes. It was to work with artists and actors. Yeah. So basically Travis, you guys came out here to freaking make it. Well, Travis there... was always more into the acting side of things. He really, really, really wanted to act. Oh, him. I didn't know that. He told me, yeah. Um, and he's in one of these gold films. He plays a dead heroin addict. Sorry to hear that, <laughs> Travis. I tried to like find the footage and burn it, but once you can, once you're there, you're there. So the trip <laughs> itself and and getting everything together to make the trip was a whole ordeal. I had to negotiate with the landlords because we had signed mm -hmm. a lease, and uh, I had to agree. Uh, Jim talked me through all this. Jim, I, wow, he was like, "Get a note, get a promissory note, and make it yourself, and write it like this, and bring it in, and, and wow. show them how, or tell them that you will pay them X amount per month for their, and and they can leave the rental open, and they'll still be making money." Wow, um, he knows all this shit because he's had to do this a thousand times to coax people, just like he's done this a million times. Yep. So. Uh, I did all that, and then the the property company approved all of that, and they were like, "Well, reluctantly." I got to say, they were very reluctant. They're like, "Okay, well, because you were you kind send of the money, you know." Okay, yeah. Because I'm like, I'll send you checks, you know. And she's like, "Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of shady." <laughs> yeah, so we got all that sorted. We uh, got the the U-Haul, um, and that was the biggest pain in the butt. Once we got the U-Haul we were already pretty much packed and ready to go on our little cross country adventure and, and excited, right? It, well, it was, it was, it was, I made, I burned so many CDs for the trip. I'd burned Hell like 12 yeah. CDs, uh, to listen to of all kinds of music. And, you know, uh, we hit out on the road. Uh, it was oh, cold yeah. still. So it was probably February, March, something like that. And, uh, 2003. And we we made a stop in Lake Charles. We played some music with my friend Charlie, who's no longer with us, and um, suicide, uh, drug abuse, and also mental stuff. He had a, a bipolar type two um, and uh, alcohol uh, alcoholism. So we we hung out with some of our friends there and uh, and stayed with family and. Uh, you know, mom was like, well, you know, typical mom stuff like here, make sure you have it. She's like slipping me some cash make on the sure side. You, the, you take you care, know. good care of yourselves and get tw eight hours of sleep each night when you're playing your music. Right. And if you get tired, pull over. If you get hungry, eat. And if you get tired, go to sleep. So, Wait, Marcus, she didn't have any apprehension about what are you going down there to join? What's the Scientology shit? Did she know it was Scientology at this point? Or did no, you, man, my, you just my, kept it? My just folks. Are, are older so like you know that okay. and that doesn't necessarily mean they wouldn't be informed but the way that they live their life is very like you know they watch the tv like yeah. mom is mom had seen some stuff PTS about to the middle class well that's what scientology would call it i would just right. call it um, normal people yeah normal people like they had no no reason to suspect that there was anything crazy crazy going on yet or, you know, and they never really did until years later. And I told them, but because uh, uh, they really thought it was a good thing in their mind for many years, they thought it was a really good thing because it got me and Travis off of drugs. They thought they were going to lose us to drugs. Right. Definitely the lesser of the two evils there. Right. 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 So even if they didn't like it, even if they disagreed with it and believe me, they thought we were weird as hell and we've always been weird, but like. The, they, they would just it. be like okay well you know whatever glad you're here we love you you know um head out to that scammer's paradise in california like mimi calls it just as long as we get our son off drugs 
and I think also, you know, my brother Maynard had lived out there and, 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 uh, we visited when I was a kid and, and I, I always wanted to go back. So I feel like there was a secondary sort of like, you know, understanding that my mom maybe had that, like, maybe I want to go out there and just, you know, sow my oats or whatever. So, you know, we head out through Texas and it's, you know, as we're, as we're on the road, like we're getting call. I, I remember getting calls and having to call Jim to get money for gas because we were really, by the time we were on the road, like the, the donors apparently were like, okay, they're on the road. Don't ask us for any more money. But so I they gave to, you enough to cover the moving, but not the gas. The I, trip? I did, yeah. I mean, I had to call them. To, they did pay for all the gas, but I did have to stop somewhere. I remember stopping and, and having to call Jim be like, dude, out of gas got a two and a half ton van here with a trailer, you know, it's, uh, cause not he a did, problem, he, Marcus we will take care of it. Right. Right. We, right. But he had already done the calculations on the miles per gallon and everything for my vehicle. So he was like, well, why, why, why did it fall short? What have we missed a withhold? Where did that money go? Exactly. Did he, he didn't like accuse you of doing drugs or spending on, on hookers or anything. Did he? No. Uh. -uh. Yeah. So he gives you the gas money. And yeah, you, we get you the finally money, we make it going. out there. Uh, as at the further we go, you know, it, it, Jeremy, our friend, is going to be completely blindsided when we get there. Like he thinks we're going out there to play music, because that's what basically we've been told. And you didn't know you were going to join an evil cult out in California. You didn't know that either. You thought you were Not legitimately really. going out to play music, right? Yeah, I mean, I figured we were going to volunteer on at the mission. Yeah, and, and these then, are the promises Jim made you. He wasn't right. telling you how brutal it's going to be. And He's when sold. I think volunteer, I think yeah. you know some you know a couple hours a week, uh, exactly. maybe 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 forty hours a week. Maybe he didn't like even go job. over the hours at this point, markets, and say, "Hey, here's your schedule. We're going to have you sign a two and a half year contract." He didn't really get into the nitty gritty until he had you out there isolated right. in California. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, Inter that's interesting. That's, well, I mean, that's to me that's like typical. Not interesting. Typical, That's except if he's going to have you move out, you think he would have at least given you, you would have asked, what are the conditions of the contract? How many hours am I going to actually be working? He, I'm sure you asked, but he probably kept that vague is what I'm saying. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. As, as did Monica and uh, Vicky, who I would talk to Don't as well. Don't say the name Monica anymore. That's going to cause your girlfriend to jump in here again any second. <laughs> I don't just care. Kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, and, so, and the people that he's talking about, just to interject real quick, they're incredible people and incredible salesmen. Jim Hamry's a registrar. He's the one that sold my dad and me, and they will will do anything, as we talked about before, to get you to sign that staff contract, keep everything as vague as possible, make any promise you want. Hey, Marcus, come out. You'll just work a few hours a week, and then you, you know, you'll be in L.A., dude. You can make it as a musician. This is where you need to be anyways. Oh, and by the way, we have a lot of celebrities in Scientology. We got the hookup. So they'll say anything and everything. And then when they finally get you to sign the contract, your world closes in on you, as we'll get into. Yeah. Yeah. Because as Travis pointed out, nor did we get the details of our living arrangements. Really? So, did you ask Travis? Did you ask at all? Did you what what would response would you get back from Jim when you asked for specifics? If you don't mind telling me. You'll have to ask him. I don't know. Yeah, sure. I don't remember asking him, but uh, because I had a van, I was happy to sleep in the in the van, and I did. So. And you're young, and you're it's part of the rock style yeah. rock rock music. I've been school. doing that for years prior. You, you know, that's how I got I the experience you. to get to work at uh, UA. So, uh, yeah, we get there, and Jeremy is immediately sort of like singled out by Monica, and is. Uh, yeah, he said there was a house, right? Which yeah, was a staff was house. <laughs> yeah, he didn't yeah. say it was a staff city, Travis. You'll be living with 20 other uh, trap cult members. It was more like eight or nine when we got there. When we got there, it was crowded for sure. We were sleeping on the living room floor and sleeping bags and stuff. Nope, he didn't mention that it had eight people there. <laughs> and by the way, Travis, that's what got me out of there. When I signed the staff contract and I was living with Jim and hearing him snore and shit, and there was like <laughs> eight, ten other people in there, I'm like, I'm not going to last at all, bro. Mm. okay so you're getting out under false pretenses very yeah we arrived we knowledge. arrive and it, it, yeah we arrived to a dead thing you know and it's just like what do you do from there uh I, what did you think when you first got there what were your first impressions and what did you first see well it was a nice building um it was much nicer than the one in baton rouge 
the people seem to be nicer and more um well as a as a buddy like as a scientologist in becoming like i'm like okay these people have good calm they're they're right um they're a little more refined right than than the ones down in louisiana yeah definitely. and i'm in california and the weather's amazing and and there's all these new things new sites like that's one of the things when i was young and i toured i, I loved that like that that alone was was fun worth it. was worth it and 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 I enjoyed that the beach you know going out uh, going out to see the beach whenever first couple of weeks we were there and um and just seeing the coast and and being in that area is very nice area ventura, ventura is a very nice it's beautiful area. i love it dude i love it <laughs> i love it right by the beach yeah travis is what the fuck did i sign up for well, well i didn't you tell know, you what ran up for of course right travis you you were about to find out yeah but they got to handle jeremy first because jeremy is clearly he's the third uh, wheel that you came out with the third band. yeah they wanted to get him on staff too right marcus is like all three well they, they wanted were to try to get see. they did an oca on him monica did an oca it was quickly mm -hmm. this is my that this is not i'm fact. 50 by the way i'm going to be 50 in july lady born in july 1973 uh I can't say this is factual, but I can say I can sort of like imagine that very quickly Jim was like, oh, yeah, this guy's not going to work. I, I can work with Travis. I can work Why did with he say that? If you don't mind me asking, well, what, because, did he, what did he suss about him? Specifically? Well, I mean, Monica straight up asked him if he took psych meds. and But you had too. That's why I asked you about the ECT. No, currently. Okay, currently. Got it. And he was currently on meds. Good for him. That got him at immediately disqualification. That saved his life right there. It did. Mm -hmm. But, you know, within three days, he said it was more than three days because I talked to Jeremy recently. Um, it was about two weeks. And then he finally got to get the hell out. He went Good to the bus him. station and just waited. He called his mom and got a ticket on a bus from Ventura, California, wow. back to Jackson, Mississippi. It took him almost four days. So it was wow. the worst bus ride of his life. Not only the because of the stops and the long trip, but you know, like he's leaving behind his his friends, his band. And that took a lot of courage for him to leave when he could have easily just stayed there and sucked it up rather than you know take the kind of. I don't think it would have been easy for him. I think he would have been. I think that's why he got sussed out because he was probably a, a potential suicide. I see. Mm hmm. Yeah, okay. if he just stayed there and, and been pounded on and worked on mentally, yeah, he, he might have actually they would have broke him. Yeah, and they they listeners they're like hawks on people that have that kind because they're going to put you through trauma based mind control. That's what Scientology is. So you have to have a certain qualifications to make sure that you don't totally you go become psychotic a liability. when you, you crack there yeah. you go which marcus did end up becoming as we get closer to the end of the story that's I why i'm surprised you got this far marcus without them kind of i think they were just greedy i think they just wanted you yeah exactly they're greedy greedy exactly, greedy they're exactly, thinking exactly. You know, we can push them we can push them we can push them puff, so, puff pass man how could you light that in front of me when i don't have similar tools not fair brother don't you have a pipe i don't have it near me and i'm not going to promote drugs cheers like to everybody also <laughs> shout out to this is really happening aka tish glad to see you again oh yeah um it's i don't i don't know tish uh but she was apparently a long time follower of marcus when he started his youtube channel link in the description from the very beginning way, which from was 2015 beginning. right well hubbard says elron hubbard the Com commodore says 2014 and i'm not sure is the commodore here man i haven't fucking seen he was him here yet. at the very beginning i'm not sure if he's still here okay hubbard not acceptable come back from target two and join us it's not the same without you oh he there's says kelly the what's up fuel. kelly so good to see the, you. The fuel's too expensive, is what he said earlier. It's like going back awesome. and forth from Target too. Real quick, shameless promotion. If you haven't subscribed to Kelly Copter's channel, her videos are amazing. Oh, Kelly Copter, hi. Yeah. And Colt Vault, too, is another one to hit up that was in the comments. Yeah, yesterday. yeah. Okay. I do need to check that out. It's, it's an amazing channel. Okay, excellent. But please, but I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. So they 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 got Jeremy out of there basically very quickly, and uh, once once that happened, you know, it, it, this is now we're in a territory where I'm essentially going to be pulling from whatever memory that I do have. At the, there's going to be uh, 
blackouts, you know, like at, because whenever I don't know how else to describe it other than uh, the sleep deprivation, the food deprivation, even if it's a slow gradient. It was already happening to you on day yeah, one. Okay. Slow gradient. Yeah. I mean, um, the we arrive with no money. You know, and so to get paid, we have to volunteer and to volunteer, we have to sign the contract. You vulnerable. Yep. You're just so, the fact that you don't have money. They already kind of own you at this point. Right. Because you're totally vulnerable to them now okay. that you're stuck in California. Travis says he'll try to fill in. Well, get on, get on camera, man. Shit. Come Travis, you here. don't even have to show your face and it's totally on your time whenever you're available. No pressure <laughs> whatsoever. But I would really love to hear your story. I watched your interview with Aaron and I thought it was amazing. And I was thinking it would be great to tell your story and have you and Marcus, you know, your brother jump on here and I could field questions to you because you guys had a very different reactions. Did you not to the experience? It would be interesting to see because Marcus tried to you tried to get Travis's, you were used by Hamry and stuff to get Travis's ass back. You said, don't let him go back. You know, he's not going to come back. And you were pimped by them to get your own bro back, right? I don't want to jump ahead. But well, I mean, I would yeah. just love to hear the yeah, contrast between ahead. you two, man. Yeah. I, the, the, I think if I, I think that, that, you know, once we sign our contracts, um, there may have been some more testing involved and more interviews there's lots of interviews when you are a staff member it's either interviews or meetings or cycles of action with the mm -hmm. public so like you know you if you're if you're volunteering at venture mission um you know and you've signed your contract and you're you're expected to be there at anywhere 6 7 a.m to talk about what you're going to do and learn yep. your post and go yep. do the hatting and then, you know, uh, take courses, take staff status one and two. Right, right. And do other courses and do other hatting. They call it hatting, which is mm -hmm. training, which is neurolinguistic programming stuff that you do with other people so that you so that you learn how to keep other people in your group exactly. under control. Exactly. Um, and you learn becomes, how to be controlled. And mm -hmm. to control other people, which is what you learn in the very first course, a communication course. Yeah, and easily like go group think, you know, like exactly um, because you, no one, if you've got your control in, like the hard cell pack says, mm -hmm. <laughs> then yep. you can. Uh, I mean, it's it's just a matter of, you know, command intention. Yep, tone forty. Right. So do this. Thank you. Do this. I don't care how you do it. What see the, the 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 core concept of it the 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 evil kernel in there is that it doesn't matter how it's done, just get it done. Doesn't matter if you have to blow exactly. everyone's brains out, get it done. You know exactly. Like, it doesn't matter if you have to hornswoggle the U.S. government and infiltrate them uh, and risk yeah, going to jail. Get it, get it get done, done. God damn it. We need duns. We need duns, and that's a phrase that you that, that, that we, you'd start to hear. We need duns. Oh, what's a DUN? Uh, a DUN is a goal project or, uh, uh, let's see, goals, projects, or um, targets and goal. Yeah, targets and goals or projects that are completed. DUNs. And that's Got what it. we need from you as a volunteer, uh, which is a staff member. A staff member is a volunteer. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, when people say they're staff members, what they're saying is they volunteered at a church of Scientology. Now that, that's something now at that, this point, Marcus, were you told 40 hours a week, this is what your volunteer hours are going to consist of, or are they still kind of leading you along the fishing line? Pretending never you, ending more thing. You, you got more to do. You've always got more to do. Yeah. Maybe you can have some time later, but we have something that yep. for that called a CSW and, a, wow. and it means so you're completed learning staff slowly. work. So when you have completed staff work, like we were talking about the duns, then you can petition for your fucking freedom. Essentially. Exactly. What did you uh, think of this when they first started to hit you with these ideas, the CSW and stuff? Were you going, whoa, 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 wait a minute? Or did they lead you in enough where you're like, they gave you enough freedom and control where you're like, okay, I'm not getting weirded out yet. What well, are you thinking about all this? Well, I mean, so, you know, Jim is good at the gradient stuff. Yep, he and, did, and very much is. Kathy is too. So, like, yep. you know, it, it was a very, 
Whereas it could have been a very much a knee jerk, like, oh no, I'm getting the fuck out of here. It was very slow. It was like, we need a CSW uh, to. Tra to Travis have the just night said off. you guys work nonstop. And, and so <laughs> that's what I was kind of wondering, Mark. It's like, so when you're just showing up, I know they got you working your ass off right away because I know how that mission and Scientology in general works. So did you ever have any thing going off in your head about we made a mistake at this point or were they so melting you like butter no red flags were popping off in your head you know i've got a i've got a tune that i haven't recorded yet called reconsider mm -hmm. and it's one of nice. trav's picks like there's uh, not everything that i write travis loves but uh together we can usually make it something that we both enjoy but this one really stuck out to him and there's a lyric in here uh that i think fits and uh it's uh the whole concept is about and it starts out there's a mission bell ringing you know like it, literally i'm talking about the ventura uh mission yeah. because there was a church nearby and the bells would ring and i was and i i wrote this first line while i was there oh, there's shit. a mission bell have ringing. Been a it's cold outside holy shit. wrapped up in a blanket uh telling myself lies and the mission bell that was ringing was that san buena ventura mission fame mission bell that they have that right near the it mission sure right is. yeah wow sure dude this is, is such a trip because it's like <laughs> almost like life was showing you and reflecting back that you're in danger and you're writing right. songs about it but little did you know what was to come holy shit dude. yeah but the but one the line that i was actually referring to is that we locked the door before we arrived you know like um and and, and these other things that are that are like a constant isolation uh sleep constant deprivation isolation, constant isolation requires contemplation um and, and and there's just like you're isolated you're working okay. a shit ton you're being fed a bunch of things you're doing things you're checking your words your word clearing you're clay demoing you're going to pick up so and so you're uh to bring just back busy the all the time they had yeah you busy right out of the gate mm -hmm. yeah busy 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 no time to think back on the farm with the rest of the animals that's all part of keeping you going so they hit you right away with work they they didn't go slowly on you well like i said they had to get jeremy out of the way so right once they got jeremy out of the way thank you kelly i like this shirt too this did she dead did girl jeremy for me yeah did, Der did Jeremy freak out or did you freak out on losing Jeremy and try to talk Jim into what do you mean our friend has to go? I thought we need him as part of the band. Well, Jim, Jim was just pretty upfront about it, you know, um, and he was like, you know, he's done a lot of psych drugs. He's probably not going to get much better. Uh, wow. We can't make him more able. Um, wow. It's probably best to just let him go. You know, he wants to go. And he was this was another uh, you know one of these like jim pulling a rabbit out of his ass mm -hmm. like he made it seem so okay yep i understand yeah but uh it was i was upset and i did want him to stay and uh, i remember like it's a picture burning in my mind him smoking a cigarette and we're talking and he's looking at me like i'm the one that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> you know but he's wow. worried and he he's worried about me and he's got major issues he, he's got major issues that uh that he's been trying to deal with for a long time and, and still struggles with so he had uh it, it, it's very telling that you know he's looking at me smoking this cigarette and he's like man i hope you're gonna be okay it's like wow that's a hell of a impactful statement coming from the that source you know so <laughs> No offense to Jeremy, he would he right. would totally agree, agree with me. He'd be wow, like, really? Okay. <laughs> oh shit, man. Yeah, I'll link him the video later. He'll be like, "Damn, man." Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't know you were so in touch with him. Oh shit. yeah, yeah. Jeremy, it's all good, brother. If you're listening, uh, don't come for us. <laughs> no, he's he's the sweetest guy ever, dude. He's very. I am very glad nice. he didn't get into Scientology too. The psych drug saved him, so good yep. for him. And they saved him while well, he went through years of, of torment too. But uh and in and, and after we left, this is skipping for just a little bit, just on mm -hmm. this note of Jeremy, uh that that he would later contact me and be like, Man, you know, Scientology's right about a lot of the this shit, the drugs. Um, but not all of it, obviously. He's like, there are drugs at work, but like the stuff that I went through after le leaving Scientology, he's like, after after he left, he went through he went to a doctor and he went through a whole like let's figure out what works for you and 
went taking lots and lots and lots of different types of drugs and it put him through you know a nightmare of drug uh withdrawals and this years. is what we were talking about earlier marcus right where scientology can be right about we over medicate people rather than get to this root emotional core of why that person got fucked up to begin with yeah that's just our way give them a pill and shut them up yeah um so yeah the uh from 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 we're in ventura now so we made it to ventura it's 5 23 p.m got your purif you're semi-indoctrinated in scientology and this is 20 and years ago Martin, now wow 20 years God. ago and here we are still talking about it <laughs> by the way so marcus uh or travis have some indoctrination too they put you right to work you get your sleep deprived now did they offer you any courses or any training other than the staff status did you get any time to pursue your music where was your headspace at when you were hustling around and bustling for me it was all focused on melrose mission because the uh that's where i believed we were going to be able to do the music i see because we needed to raise the money to build the mission we had the building uh, at, uh we went and visited rachel and hal and and the group the whole sorry. little celebrity group i have to jump in real quick i'm so sorry to interrupt marcus i'm just you're triggering things and i want to keep you know the thing on track so i'm just wondering like when you're busy 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 what did they promise you versus what are you experiencing? In other words, what were you getting out of being on staff? What were you told you were going to get out of it? Was I'm it, not sure what, what you're was asking. It, was it meeting how? Was it meeting the celebrities? Was it you're now in LA and you're going to get to go play some gigs? In other words, the you didn't go, go there to just be... to work on Scientology. No, absolutely not. Scientology is a secondary. Of course. The main thing was getting out to LA and meeting people and playing music. Okay, and they promised you that you can do that through Scientology by yeah, being the because we were the, they the were Rachel opening Miners. a mission on Melrose Avenue, which is right. Okay, that's, there, the I'm gig sorry. is like right down the road. You got the whiskey, you got Hot Sunset that's, Boulevard, all that right there. That's what the I meant, Marcus. Studios, I, I got up. I, I got up track. I forgot the question I was going to ask you. Melrose was the big sell, right? Yes. That was going to be yes. the sell where all the hit musicians come, and that's the role you and Travis play. I, I right. totally got it. Okay, got it. And and so like that was my main focus, and uh, and, and I think that it was pretty clear to some of the executives that like I didn't really care about being in Ventura and trying to go sell books with Monica. Right right um and i didn't really and travis was selling books with with adam and adam is a uh a i book, remember adam the, yeah I adam was him. the bookstore officer and he's from gaydon louisiana mash so me like him and travis just got along real real good you know like they yeah. could talk about stuff that happened back i home. understand that man i got no that. you can't do no cajun accent you man uh, i was trying you. to do a cajun accent. it sounded like more mm -hmm. like uh an aggie or something like that yeah know? i'm on jamaican <laughs> <laughs> anyways that's how adam talks it would be uh wonderful to get him on sometime uh but cool. he, so he lives in a uh hurricane stricken like it's still messed up over there in, in golden meadow so he he carves wood and does wood working for money that's all he can do um so melrose was my focus and uh, that i want personally like i'm like i want right. okay you guys say that when we go to melrose we'll have you know a place to have an open mic in that city which is like you know and melrose is a little happening spot you get a lot of foot traffic uh galliano yeah that's where he was from travis uh um, nice so um okay i go Finally. to i go to to the, the they're like okay fine go to go to do the renos with john jones those and, are renovations to build the Melrose Mission, FYI, guys. Right. So we go uh, probably two or three months after is after I finish my staff status and all that stuff, I get to go to Melrose with John Jones uh, to do renovations uh, to make it happen faster. Um, of course, faster, faster, faster. We'll definitely contact you, Travis. Thanks. Looking forward to that. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, so for there was six months of that, but I was back and forth in, in ethics. But you want to go into the details of what is all going on in that. So that's that's the tricky part because a whole lot. This is this is 
I was only in Scientology per se, like as a staff member for two and a half years, maybe three. Quite a long time, actually. Well, you know, there's people that have been in for fucking decades. That's true, and there, but there's only people like me have been in for two weeks. So I could, I just imagine two and a half years would have been, felt like 10 years to me. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's like a little whole lifetime fit inside three years. Yep. Um, very, very compressed, very condensed. So, uh, you know, John and I would work day to day uh, and go to go on course. Uh, at Ventura or not Melrose, obviously. No, we would go on course at, I went to Pack Base okay, and he went to CC. Okay. So I was at the big blue building and he was at the Celebrity Center. Interesting. And uh, so, yes, I was there to study Scientology as well, because the reason I didn't want to go to CC, I mean, they were like, hey, uh, why don't you go to CC? Like, you're going to be the FSM for Melrose. Like, that makes no sense. shit. Why didn't I'm they like, send you there? Well, I, I was like, I understand all of that. But if I can't apply the tech correctly, I think that uh, Pack Base has probably got a better <laughs> thumb on the tech than look at DC. the Scientology <laughs> on Marcus already. <laughs> Because that's a great point. You're right. Yeah. yeah CC, totally. by the way, you make a great point because I always thought CC was for the pansies too. Yeah. And when I finally got to L. Ron Hubbard Way to do the advanced materials, mm -hmm. I felt much more in tech. In, oh, yeah. Because it's you're right about that. That's funny though. Because everybody wanted to go to CC, bro, because they wanted to of course. You know, hobnob with it. it yeah. They want to, they want a trendy place. They want a dingleberry, is what I always called it. They want a it's, dingleberry. They, they want to be are. some cliff hanging on someone's ass, you know, hanging <laughs> exactly. on someone's ass. And I can't stand that. I can't me neither, stand brother. that stuff, me man. I can neither, man. So um, me neither. That's and and of all I... the celebrities that I did meet, I never got a picture with any of them. Well, you didn't give a fuck. I, exactly. In I fact, they were usually more interested in, in me because they, I didn't. Because your you know? staff, and, hey, dude. I, hey, man, preach it because I feel the exact same way. And that's one of the main reasons I can't stand Hollywood. <laughs> I wish yeah. I had a picture with Beck and Juliet Lewis and Patrick Renna and all that stuff. So I, I wish you did too. Just so back it up. Sh show and Lindsay Bartleson and, and, and Rachel oh, yeah. and all that. And how there, I do have a picture of, uh, of how, when I was running, when we did the Melrose opening. Oh, nice. I'd like and to I was see that. helping him with all the, uh, well, actually I helped put all of the, uh, the equipment together you know i did get a picture with rachel she's on my demo reel i don't know if you saw episode oh, eight or nine or whatever on the series but yeah i'm holding the knife to her throat and shit because and ah. lightfield lewis juliet lewis's yeah. brother he yeah. was the one that shot all the demo reels for us actors right and he had access to all the c and b level celebrity actors in right right and he was at the first meetings for melrose and i met him there oh and... really yeah he because remember marcus he was kind of on the outskirts like the whole lewis family he hated, jeffrey he lewis hated every one of us i know and he was not really a scientologist he juliet was making millions of dollars in all these movies and he was kind of like he, was he lived in the same apartment it. complex i did oh he felt he's a good dude though by the way he was just very eccentric mm -hmm. very poor and he didn't get any support from his sister from his or his family, family. And he was just yeah. living in this dump that i was living in right but he made sick demo reels though bro and yeah when he, when he said we're gonna shoot with rachel today it's like fuck yeah because i love that movie bully uh, oh god that is so, that, that is her bet that to that me is that her. is the quintessential rachel minor film not only rachel minor but that's a damn good movie there was um that kid from um that looks like kurt cobain in it too that i was a fan of at the time i don't remember i don't the other I, stars I, uh Brad Renfro was in it. R.I.P. Oh wow! Damn. A lot of child actors in that that have, mm. that were sexually abused and later died, like Brad Renfro mm. and Nick Stahl was in it. He was from the Terminator series. They were all sexually abused. Bijou Phillips is in it, and we know she's married to Danny Masterson. And then Rachel Min Miner was in it. So there's two really? Scientologists. God, and this that is the makes guy that, so much sense. And this is the guy that did Kids, which was very controversial in underage sort of activity. Right, right, right. right. Such a slime. To me, that not to get off track on Bully, but that the cast of characters and actors mm -hmm. and just the whole vibe of Larry Clark, the director, mm -hmm. fits Hollywood as I, I see it now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, okay. what year did that come out? That was 2001. I don't know. Good question. 2001? 2001. Yeah. Right when the wake up call happened with Scientology and 9 11 hit and everybody had to get on board. Yeah. Which is, and I remember Rachel feeling like seeming very flush at the time and Hal as well, because Hal was doing uh, Dawson's Creek. Right, right. And this is uh, Hal Osden, or however you pronounce his name. 
question to Doug and Marcus. Back in your day, was the celebrity scene as weird, satanic as it is today? One eye, horns on head, had horns on head. I don't recall She's anything talking about satanic. This. No, I mean you're talking about that symbolism where the celebrities do you know, the one eye shit and all the Illuminati crap or whatever. Yeah. It's not. I mean, Scientology's filled with those kind of symbols. We talked about the Rosicrucian cross where they have the crossed out Christian cross in Scientology. It's 100% satanic, but it's it's hidden over in Scientology, so it's not like the Church of Satan where it was obvious or the Scientology, the Hollywood shit that promotes Satanism openly through symbols and shit. No, it didn't feel like that at all. But but Annie. It definitely felt satanic. I talked about how I was so used to growing up with Scientology in and around my family, the celebrities I ran with, the Masterson crew, and then being out of it, there was such an evil, disgusting energy on me my whole life, just when mm -hmm. my dad brought Scientology into the family. And then after extracting myself and deprogramming for 10 years, I don't feel that way anymore at all. So yes, there is definitely a quote unquote satanic energy in and around that not just celebrity center, but the people themselves. I mean, if you believe in possession, then I would say some these people are definitely getting quote unquote possessed with fucking Scientology, man. I don't know how else to describe it, Marcus. Do you know what I'm talking about? How it just kind of, do you look back at the experience and it has like, there's just a dark energy around these. This I could see it, clique. but honestly, like, uh, like I've said on my channel before, um, like the Scientology experience was not the darkest part of my life. I totally understand Which is that crazy. knowing your life. I know, but I understand <laughs> but, you've, you've lived a crazy ass life, my man. I'm yeah. So, happy so like I've here. the evil, the evil that exists in Scientology to me was nothing that evil. compared to you. It wasn't yeah. that evil. It was like people were being nice to each other. At least they weren't I, trying to murder each other. Oh no. I'm just saying, no. looking back, like, dude, there's so many stories, brother. I'm just thinking of Carol. I'm thinking of Bobby Lyons acting class where the Masterson kids were there. Laura Papon. Carol Masterson, um, there people would die and drop off, like OTH would vanish out of nowhere, and then we were told fake stories as to why they died. There was just a lot of death, a lot of suicides, and this horrible, horrible energy. And the only reason I know that is because I don't I'm away from it and I don't feel that way anymore. It's hard to describe, but it fucking it you know, I Marcus, I was we were a middle class family. We were living in Camarillo, California, and we were good little boys and girls. So I didn't live this dark, crazy you know, rum and coke, you know, while running away from cops and shit when I was 15, like you and shit, you know, I didn't grow up like in the hood or whatever. I grew up in this stupid, like middle-class cloistered family. So Scientology was a shock to the, the vertical. I didn't grow up in the hood. I grew up in the, in the <laughs> You country, know what I mean. But I spent time in the hood. But you and rolled I spent hard. Time. Let me just say that way. You rolled hard, brother. <laughs> we don't have to get into that. Complete maniac. Okay, so you're at Melrose, you're sleeping on the fucking balcony, yeah, right? And you're doing renos. Right. And it, did it take about six months to build the fucking thing? When did it you... took six months to do the guts. So that okay. meant the con okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty. Please. We did we pulled out all of after the meeting, after that first Melrose meeting with the celebs. And right, you may have been which there, we talked about sure. last time. I but, wasn't there. Um you may have maybe but you I know were persona non grata and Jim was or your dad requested that you not be there me, some stupid shit i don't I'm gonna, know I'm fucking care. while you're talking i'm gonna think about where <laughs> think about why i wasn't there right i should have because there. you should have been there yeah i should have so, i'm wondering what the hell what, um, what year marcus were, are we talking about 2003 okay please go so we're uh we go right. check out the building it's upstairs there's a bunch of mirrors everywhere it used to be an old dance studio right and right. uh hal plays us this amazing song called earth man which you cannot find anywhere anymore unfortunately Cool. But uh, the lyrics are fucking f fantastic. Hal is an amazing singer, performer. He is, and, and actor. And actor. I liked him on and Dawson's Creek. He played, uh, <laughs> we all kind of passed the guitar around. It was me, Hal, uh, Mike Beecher. Um, Rachel was there with her friends and her PA. Ginger Who were her Larson's. friends, by the way? Did, well, was Ginger Macaulay Larson. Culkin, her, was her husband Macaulay Culkin? They had already been split. Up? Okay. No, they were already split up. But they, it was re, it was fairly recent, but uh, she had a group of friends with her, like Jessica Sterling, uh, Ginger Larson, and her husband, um, uh, Aaron Larson. Uh, Wes Beecher had a little brother. Um, wow. <clears throat> those, was but it was a smallish gathering, and we just kind of. Uh, oh, Tom and Kathy were there, which was so of course weird. they were. Why? So why do you weird. say that? Well, because like I mean, they were in their forties. 
you know, maybe pushing 50. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kathy's my mom's age, so there would have been the so same age. they were the old fogies hanging around the hip. Yeah, and they're actors. but but they're dressed all hippie, you know, and yeah, and they're, they're cool like, this looking. is cool, you know. You know these and Hal and Rachel Dinoros. are on the corner going, Who the fuck are these guys, Marcus? No, they know them. That's I mean, Kathy is the one who got uh uh the contact at CC uh just through her own back channels. This is and that's something. To, to Meaning say, to set up the Melrose mission, to set up this meeting with you guys. Yeah, and the she probably contacted Dave Pettit and was like, "Give me yeah. names." You're right. Give me names that I can, you know. Dave anyways. Pettit, guys, was the president of Celebrity Center. Right. He's a big dude. He's a big time he, dude with the yep. big time celebrities. Like he's he's talked to Tom Cruise many times. Yep. In his he office. talked to me to get me to go to their celebrity click when I finally broke into Hollywood and got a television show. And they right, he's your the make or break office. guy. Yeah, if yep. you go to the president's office, you're a made you're special. Yeah, I was just about to get in there, brother, before this right. asshole dropped off this cult book. The Thank book. God, man, fuck that. I'd rather be homeless and starving and exiting Scientology than be in Dave Pettit's little celebrity click at CC because, it, like I said, it's one of the most evil. I don't know what other word to use, dude. I was I was getting ready to really sell my soul out permanently. So you six months of Renos, you getting yep. is this kind of how you're getting in with the celebs, you know, or was there just that well, one you're getting event? Ahead. Or, so we okay, did please. The, yeah, we got the uh we did the meeting and then and then we went back to Ventura, and that's whenever I was like, Okay, look, if we want I'm ready. Let's go, go, let's go, go. And they're like, Fine, John. To take Marcus, we'll go to the what y'all do start Renos because John had a construction background and he had a license for electrical. So we go in there and we just start busting out the walls. And there's also some labor there doing uh, some of the some of the demo too. So we had uh, two to four. Just you know, you go to the Home right, Depot and pick them up. Right, you go to right. the Home Depot and pick them up and pay them whatever, maybe even feed them. But uh, we'd, uh, John would tell them what to do. Uh, but we were swinging sledgehammers, knocking walls out, knocking uh, complete walls out, and basically making it one giant room that we were then going to design and had an architect build a blueprint that we had to conform to. That and giant room, real quick, Marcus, I know what you're talking about because that's where Rachel and Lightfield, that's where we shot, right? When you guys were mm -hmm. renoing. This is why I can't believe we didn't run into you on the balcony. <laughs> we were even, we were, I remember hanging out with Rachel on the balcony. Well, we would have been to told to leave if there was oh, any public right. coming. Right. But this is yeah. right when it was renovating. Yes. Exactly. Or we would have been on course. So, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we knock everything out. We start, we knock all the walls out and then we start uh, buying materials for electrical stuff. And this is an old building and it has certain grandfather things and certain things that aren't. So we're navigating that whole rigmarole by ourselves. But John's pretty well equipped to handle that. But what ended up happening is he was fighting the city and I was uh, regging people for donations to get more materials to continue to build. And um, uh, we got conduit. We got the all of the uh i'm going into detail here of how we built no, please, it please. you know uh we, we had the dropped uh conduit off the ceiling by probably whatever the the, the uh, standard is six six inches or a foot i think it's I a foot know. and uh, we ran all of the power we had the blueprint kathy had decided on the blueprint they paid the architect and okay so this is what it's going to be like so we got the first look me and john at what the layout was going to be and uh, so we start, you know, measuring everything out. We start measuring, okay, well, this has to be this, just like a blueprint, you know. Mm -hmm. We start marking, you know, we do this for a week, for a week or two. Uh, we get some labor in to start built framing. We start framing things. Uh, everything goes really swimmingly and smooth up until the plumbing uh, because there was some... Uh, some stuff that we just didn't know how to do. But there was a public in Ventura named uh, Benton Ludicky, who is also an actor, uh, who came down and volunteered and uh, provided the materials and stuff to fix the plumbing issue. But that actually took a long time because Jim was regging him at the time for a whole bunch of services. And he was wanting to get those services delivered. And this is when I say this, everyone this means auditing this is like the spiritual counseling so benton wanted the spiritual counseling but jim is saying 
you need to go help fix this stuff at Melrose. Uh, it'll help you with your auditing. And so he's trying to manage work. His, he's trying full, to manage his business full, full time. Yeah, he's, he's got a full time plumbing business and he's doing his Scientology auditing and he's coming to fix this shit down in Hollywood. Uh, you know, five because days a week. that's what they that's a great point you bring up. Because what they do once they have somebody roped into Scientology is whatever your skill is that you make money at, Scientology will make you feel guilty. Perhaps you're trying to get up to the OT levels and you haven't contributed enough to Scientology. You might use your volunteer uh, skills to build and do renos and all sorts of things, all free of charge, just to be a contributing member of Scientology. Once you that was done, sorry. No, I'm, no, please. I'm just saying you got to at least <laughs> offer that to the audience if you're going to light up on camera, damn you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Cheers, everybody. Hell yeah. Yeah, once that was done. Or pretend this is one. Yes. Once that was done, uh, then Travis and the and some of the other staff that was either considered to be or considered to be uh, transferred to Melrose or people, basically people who wanted to go to Melrose from Ventura, like Jason Rutland. Jason Rutland really wanted to be in Melrose. Um, and uh, Adrian Heredia really wanted to be at Melrose. He he's he he was the head of Narconon Ojai for many years up until recently. Oh right, um, right. John, uh, not John, um, the course supervisor Adam. Um, he was there, and uh, Brennan, Brent, uh, which is the uh, kid. He's yeah, the kid's kid. Yeah, yep. I remember all these kids. He was there, so it was basically like a uh, staff member uh, huddle up at Melrose, and Kathy was doing a size up of everybody. And um, like the military, it's, it's very military. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, it was gee, I wonder why. Like. So, um, the uh, basically, they everyone wanted to stay and help do renos. Like, give me something to do. I want to work on this. Let's get it done. So that I, if I contribute to it, then I may be able to transfer here. Mm -hmm. Is the idea. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. they took full advantage of everybody. Um, of course. I, I do remember the course supervisor, uh, Adam, uh, was having his dad was very concerned and was uh, like trying to contact him. And uh, at this point, it was like one of those things where he was uh, and he was the ethics officer and he was in a real weird balance with his dad because dad used to be a Scientologist, but would come to the mission to talk to his son. And anytime wow. he would do that, he could only do it in the lobby because. Wow uh you know jim had to be within earshot yeah right and um so it was a strained relationship there but it, it it seemed you know with all those stresses everyone with all of their stresses putting that into work i'm gonna tell you something you get some shit done i understand bro so a lot of people so we get Great we get point. the drywall up we get the um all the fixtures in uh me and john start working on the fixtures as the drywall is going up we're getting the, uh, the hardwood floor ordered, um, which is very expensive. We go get furniture once the rooms start, when we get the carpet done. Um, this is an all hands, all hands on deck activity. I see, right. Because do, do you have a deadline, Marcus? A deadline yeah, date? Yeah, we push, definitely push, have push. a deadline. Okay. I can't remember. It was for Hubbard's birthday, probably. I think of course. it opened. March 15th, I think that is. Yeah, 2000, 2003. I think we made it in 2003. Like it had to be before year's end. So, wow. um, and, and like uh, you said, you can get amazing shit done when all that stress is put into the project to serve science. Everyone's stressed out. Everyone. Yep. And, and not only that, while we were doing this all hands effort on all hands on deck and, and speaking of the military type culture, like John was instructed by somebody, I don't know who, probably an ethics officer via Kathy or Tom, mm -hmm. um, probably Kathy to, uh, to keep us awake. Like we were not allowed wow. to sleep for more than like uh, two hours wow. at a time. So if wow. we would, and they called them fire drills and John come in with a bucket of water or spray bottle or whatever, really, and dude? just toss it. Cause we were sleeping at that point. There was no carpet. We were sleeping in the ED's office. It was just wood floors with uh, sleeping bags or, or uh, you know, bedding. And uh, yeah, he would come in and throw fire drill, fire That's drill, fire crazy. drill, uh, tone 40, tone 40, oh fire God. drill. Just like the military. Yeah. So uh, and then it'd be like, OK, go back to bed. 
you know so this shit went on for weeks and weeks and weeks to get us to get it done in time to get it done in time because when you when if you can't fucking sleep you know and and and, and if you try to sleep and you've got that you know, i'm uh, they're gonna come they're gonna yeah. get me you know i'm just it's gonna where, work i'm just gonna work i'm just gonna work it's literally torture, like Glitter says. Exactly. Yeah, it, yeah. You browbeat you. I remember painting this bathroom with a specific kind of paint, and it's this uh, latex paint, and and the wall hadn't been cleaned well enough, and there was like it had already been a someone had already put a base coat on it, and like I had to paint that bathroom so many times, and it was big. Uh, did you ever go to Melrose? The bathroom had a really tall ceiling. Just when it was uh, being renovated with Rachel that one day. Okay, it's the only okay. time I went. I don't the have no idea. The bathroom had this really tall ceiling and a window that you could see out of, but it, it, it was just for light. And the, it was like 15 feet. So every time I had to paint this thing, I had to go the square, and it kind of went into a chimney-looking thing to a window. And But having to paint up there, uh, and constantly go up and down, and this latex paint, I just, anyways, I had to get that done in order to go home for Christmas, is my point. Wow. Like, Kathy was like, if you don't get that fucking bath, that was the last thing, the last room that needed to be painted for all the paint to be done. Now, we also did this, uh, I forget what they call it, but it's like this uh, fancy, you do a base coat of paint, and then you do two different Second colors. Coat. Well, you use a sponge. And then normally uh, people do that on like baseboards or just mm -hmm. as accents, but we did mm -hmm. it on the entire That's insane, fucking dude. walls. Now there's a picture. If you Google Melrose mission online and it's in the intro in our, in our little segment where it says Melrose, all of that pull it up. wood and all those walls, the walls are painted that way. That was done with three, four people just like tweaked out on stress for, uh, weeks that's how they do it done. i understand i know you're not exaggerating either man yeah let me man. see if i can actually pull up one of the pictures to see what you're that's that's yeah that pull up the picture please okay yeah four because the wooden floors get... are next the wooden floors were last we got those done and then we finished them and then yeah okay perfect so you want to guide me to what we're talking about the, here that's the, the one, one on the right right here yeah beautiful by the way can that I... looks... and the four dudes just put this all together right well no, yeah, basically, me and John did most of it, but then whenever everyone else showed up, all the walls went up. So, like the lighting, me and John did. Me and John did the floor. Um, all of that so, furniture was bought literally the week of the uh, opening, I believe, of course, most of, of it. Um, but that wall, if you look at it, that's burnt sienna color, but the uh, the accents. They're all hand done <laughs> with with tiny little tiny little uh, sponges, and we literally went up and down those walls. Iris did it too. Iris was was in ethics. No at the time. shit. Iris yeah, because was, she was having a two D. Yeah, because she was having ethics problems. Who was she having a two D with? Because I had such a John that Jones, chick. that bastard. And then and then Kathy and Tom decided it was better. She had a two D with Chris Baumgartner, and. Uh, Chris Baumgartner left his wife for Iris. That's. <laughs> but that is where. Okay. So behind that picture is the balcony. And. Okay. And okay. that's where basically okay. from this point of view, this is where you would be performing uh, for the open mic night. So there would be chairs all in front of you mm -hmm. and speakers on the left and right of you and the microphone right in front of you. So basically that is the stage right there. Wow. Yep. By the we way, real quick, every not, Wednesday. Not, I was just going to ask you that. Okay. Every Wednesday? And every were they Wednesday. used to bring in new people? How, yep. how would you set it up to bring in the newbies on Melrose? So I oh. did it. Uh, I was given some agency on this, and I just made flyers, and I networked with Rachel and Hal and everybody, and it was kind of an open thing with uh, Jessica Sterling. Um, there's Rachel right there at the grand opening with oh uh, no shit uh famous jason lee is jason lee we by the way there. you guys probably know that jason lee and was uh, adrian heredia on the right photo bombing i don't know who this. that is he's a ventura <laughs> public he's photo bombing this picture what a fucker <laughs> oh that's he funny. actually has the same condition i do hppd oh really yeah Mm -hmm. What was he? He was a public. What's he doing with the celebrities? What was his status? Uh, he was just there because, like I said, his he wanted to work at Melrose. He wanted to be a volunteer at Melrose. 
he was a Scientologist, right, Marcus? Yeah. Yeah, I believe he still is, but I'm not 100% sure. He does not have on his LinkedIn profile, which we're friends on LinkedIn, he doesn't have that he's a, a director at Narconon anymore. Here's Larry Anderson, by the way. Yeah. The sad. guy who does the fame. He's dead? What yeah. did you say? No. Oh, I believe so. No, bro. No? I don't I don't think so. Okay, well. I'm going to look that up while you're I want to sample his voice. Um. Yeah. So, so all of that. So if you go back to that picture of the mission itself, that was what it looked like just prior to opening. Wait a minute, brother. One second. I didn't, uh, is I'm, is he dead? You can figure okay. that out later. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just, I think he, <laughs> I think he is. He just kind of caught me by surprise. No, I think Please continue. Is. Yeah. If you go back to that picture of the, of the mission itself, um, that is what it looked like just prior to opening. That was like a week before the opening. And then uh, Getty Images has all the pictures for that. Uh, yeah, that's probably. I just I'll go. pull up There's all Danny. the pages here. They go. That, that's the grand that's opening. Really I remember building that, really? making that ribbon out of some bullshit, like uh, and all that black underneath it. That's the, the that's actually golden apple stuff. But we had to make a ribbon like spot on the spur of the moment they're like we need a big ass ribbon it's like what of the course heck? what the fuck are we gonna make a ribbon out of is this so, melrose too by the way john travolta and kelly preston are all these melrose pictures more or less was john there did they have no that high john was celebrities uh iris's sister was john's personal assistant nanny for a, a, a long time and uh iris used oh, yeah. to do that too and uh but but iris audited her sister so she, her sister would come and sometimes john's kids would be there and i would have to whoever was in the public which was usually me in the in that picture there of the lobby like there's always somebody there and it was usually me or travis so sorry whoever, marcus i i wasn't showing you the pictures when i was talking about it i had it on the wrong tab let me make sure oh. it's open now how many of these pictures are from Scientology Melrose? In other words, was John there? Was um, that's not was Melrose? That Lewis? looks like okay. Los Feliz. That looks like the fundraiser for Los right here. Feliz. These are Los uh, Feliz jams right here. Uh, what does Missionaries that say? No, that's Haiti. in Haiti. Haiti. That, that's okay. not even Scientology. Shit, so okay. the ones up top are Scientology. That's that's Melrose. There's Lindsay at. Uh, I think I. Lindsay I want to say I. I don't know who took that picture, but I remember I was standing very close to her when she that picture was taken. And there's her and Rachel. Um, her and Rachel, yep, right here. And then uh, scroll down a little more. Maybe there'll be some I more. have there's to not many. point out Jenna Elfman real quick, one of the mm -hmm. most hardcore. She was at the grand ever. opening. Of course she was. Yeah. She also started her own mission as well. Um, there's Chris, do, do, do. Uh, Danny's brother. Look right. at how happy and carefree and young Danny looks here and compare him to what he looks oh, like during gosh. this trial. There's Juliet like... right there. In the yeah. She looks amazing, by the way, with blonde hair. Yeah. She was, wow. that was the only time I ever got starstruck in my life. Meeting I can understand Lewis. that. She's a hell of an actress, man. And she was kind oh, of a man. rebel Scientologist, like we talked about last time. Just the way that she talks. Yeah. You know, she got that twang and she ain't even Southern. It's like, damn, I know. Girl. I'm telling you, I still don't think she can, she can't sing for shit. <laughs> but that's the auto tuner i'm sure marcus how about okay so we almost hit two hours and we, we made some serious progress yeah um we're, we're, we're but, but i don't want to i don't want to end yet if you don't mind like but sure. let's let's pick a good point um to end off because we i think we hit like a a good we made it up point. to the grand opening yeah do you can you give us maybe a preview of what we're going to cover next time and and kind of lead us into the grant what happened after the grand opening well, we should probably talk about the grand opening itself and what a clusterfuck it was and how that was managed. But it was okay. The, how about something? Kathy, to be right. Yeah, Tom and Kathy wisely chose uh, a, a, a stage manager because I was a young stage manager to handle a lot of this stuff. So, like, when you work production, anyone who's in the chat who's ever worked production on uh, on the road knows that. Uh, shit always goes wrong you know murphy is yep. like always there and and sometimes in like horrific and and terrible especially ways especially in scientology brother i'm talking okay. about just rock and roll so oh, that but added with scientology with stress trying to make a rock and roll mission not like melrose <laughs> and then later los Feliz, run by patrick renna yeah i knew we weren't going to get this done in two hours because yeah. we haven't even gotten into all the all that yeah. shit but we by the way larry anderson thank mm. god still lives thank thanks for okay thanks Mark. 
that's hard to pronounce but thanks i know i i it's wexican messler very oh, nice. we hope you guys enjoy that i hope you guys enjoy this i, hope I enjoy the shit out of it man i, I mean you're too. my buddy and i i i know your story and i learned a lot just it's like so when I, I did my channel initially i was like i'm not doing this for anybody i'm you but just you... want to be youtube famous i ain't like everybody else yeah i'm only in it for the money for i sure. know and i pay great so yeah you know stop trying to pretend like you're doing this for philanthropy see i knew the three hours thing was going to come up the thing is uma i mean i have not slept I didn't go to sleep at all last night. So I'm so, I mean, I'm wide awake because this con, this has been stimulating. I can go, I just need to go to sleep, man. I feel like I've been up for two days. Yeah. Straight. Let's let Doug do his self care. He needs to do that, but we can talk you, about, brother. we can lead into the next thing, which would be pretty much the grand opening. I can go back in my mind as best as I can and remember what that was like. I have some pictures. I'll try to find them. Oh, so please that I can do, man. I'd love show to them. I can even maybe scan them, maybe uh for for friday uh and and send them to you that way that you can Please pull up the slides can. and i would uh, love that uh, also marcus do you have any pictures of the ventura mission because i used to be able to pull it up on the web but any pictures you have the old mission i just need one to show people of the old if mission you, what old mission yeah. The old Ventura mission. Remember, they have the new Ventura that they just put out a few years ago. Fuck, you dude. can't find. There's one. I have. Food. I have one somewhere of Katie eating a piece of pizza, but it's just Katie who? John's wife. Okay. Thank current you. wife, or yeah, as far as I, as far as I know, current wife. Marcus, do you have any tidbit? Like, I don't feel like we quite ended off. So we got up to the. Okay, so the the Melrose mission is built. I do remember that grand opening, by the way. I don't know why the fuck I wasn't there. If this is 2003, I have no idea. That would have totally been my scene. You want to know my theory on it? Yeah. Why, how would you know, though? Uh, well, because I worked with Jim oh, that's all the right. time. Is this something I want to hear? I don't know. <laughs> Give it to me, man. All right. So, like, from my perspective, it would have been not in Jim's benefit to have you anywhere near the Melrose Mission. Why? Because if you had any sort of problem, well, you, for one, you were raised in Scientology, mm -hmm. right? You uh, you were a son of a very wealthy donor. And any potential, like, when you talk about strategizing uh, income the way that Jim does... Yeah. The, and incorporating the dynamic of the community that you are mining, because I think of it as like sort of like mining. And so does he. Right. So um, any any person in that group dynamic or point of reference or point of viewpoint or whatever that can in any possible way intermingle with another pro project that's starting up, that's about to right, right. grow. You, you don't want to mix those income streams at all. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. And he the, didn't and, tell you anything personally about that. No, no, but no. But I, I do know I heard Doug a lot. Really, brother? That's yeah. what we're picking up from because it gets hairy after the grand opening. I mean, opening. I was never privy to it. I like when Jim's on the phone and, and he's like doing this. Like mm -hmm. that's a no go in there unless you're Adam. <laughs> Unless you're so, Adam, because Adam would just bust in there, and Jim would be, and they would have a knockdown, drag out arguments. It was bring back so many memories. But um, yeah, nobody, nobody fucked with Jim when he was on the phone, right, especially right. with your dad. And and um, you know, because of the mission, that I understand why you want the pictures because it was like, yeah, you almost had full visibility of everything going on. The there was a per, it was a perfect location for this mm -hmm. kind of neuro linguistic and body language shit to really really take hold. Because yep. you've got windows everywhere. You've got a nice little courtyard that right. you, you can see the reg, the public reg, Jim Hamry. That's why Jim Hamry can pictures. see all of these people yep. uh, in the uh, commons area. And Strategically battle placed, right? you got to mm -hmm. get those pictures if you can. I know they'll be hard to find, but I didn't I even think about what you just pictures. said. I never even had pictures of the uh, of any of the ed's room or the course room or none of that would they not allow you purposely to take pictures or it didn't no. occur to you to take when them? would i have time to take a fucking picture that's a great when would i have time a, to the take question a question answers picture? itself yeah you're right you think he i know what you're saying you think you can just snap on no Look, that's it oh there's a the picture fuck? ventura hold mission. it up a little bit more brother 
That's Katie. Look Remind at, me who Katie is because I never, I didn't know her. There's a up a little bit higher. There we go. Who is Katie? Who is that? That's John Jones' wife. John. She Jones was a wife. she was an HCO. She became the HCO. I never knew her, man. This is Dominic with an ashtray on his head. Holy shit! This is the guy that I was going to throw through the door. Wait, that looks like a girl, dude. So you got to show Dominic in that picture. Is that that's not Dominic with long hair? Yeah, that's Dominic. Yeah, that's Dominic with long hair. Holy shit! I didn't know him. Look, by the way, Marcus, she found them all. Look, wow. Boom. There's there's an open mic at the Melrose. Melrose, Mission. dude. If you can scan those for next yeah, time, I will. we can I will barely scan see them, but these yeah. are awesome. Wow, yeah. there it is. Here's a guy from the Sea Org playing. Stimulating. And here's Hal. Back. This is whenever I was. This was the grand opening. That's at Melrose. Yeah, that's the. Melrose are you guys grand outdoors? I, you guys me and Hal outdoors. were running the sound for uh, for the Hanks. Oh, I right remember there. them. Wow. Uh, this dude. is Dieter and uh, Dietrich and Dieter. This guy's flipping us off because he hates us because we're Regis. Mm -hmm. um, nice. CC Public, both of all three of those. Snotty, snooty. This is my AOLA and uh, up a little Nashville higher. Contact. Perfect. She was. She was. Uh, she looks so familiar. What's her name? <laughs> she would because she had tabs on every single one of y'all. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, boom. Higher. Another picture. Higher. There's just so many. I'll have to scan them. But here's okay, probably please the do. biggest These turnout. Are awesome. Look at, this is a this is a big turnout. <laughs> yeah. There was what, this blues guy people. from Georgia who used. Oh, here's a great one. <laughs> This one right here. And this Can't is in see the any back. of these fucking things. You're definitely gonna have to scan. I these. will scan them. All right, yeah. Sarah. She she's a public or she joined ESO and left and is in now in Austin. Good for her. And uh, no, she just dis she disconnected from me. Oh well, at least she got out of Scientology. Lady Lafayette. Yeah. This is just more. I'll scan all of these. Thanks for grabbing those, Cynthia. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, and this is John Jones. John Jones and Gareth. Yep, that's exactly. I remember John Jones, dude. He was yep. cool. I like that. Yeah, guy. he was. Him and Iris were a thing, and then Kathy was that, like, "No, you're can not you a please thing." Please not keep reminding me of that. Oh, okay. I told you they hooked me up with Iris, dude, to con yeah. me into signing the staff contract. We went on these stupid little friendship dates, and then she quickly vanished. I guess started dating other people, and I was stuck scrubbing the floor. Oh shit, brother! Thank terrible. you for fucking sharing your story. I yeah, think yeah. Perfect place to end it off. Yep. And then, how about for the next Friday, bro? We actually, I already have an idea of what we can do when we start breaking down the tech. But how about we finish off your story on Friday? Maybe on Saturday, we'll do post cult transformations, which is the final of your story where he exits. And we're going to, um, we did a whole video, guys, called about how to recover after a cult that we, that Marcus had references for. And so we have to do one more video on that. So what do you think, Marcus? Next Friday, at least, to uh, finish the story. And then we'll figure out when to do post-cult transform transformations. And then we'll get back to the tech. Does yeah. that sound like a plan? Sounds good to me. Okay. And there's a couple of quick things that I just wanted to pull up before. If you have any questions. I'm totally any... down for that, Alex. And I want to do one with Travis, too, man. You know, He's just in into three ways in general. So I'm not yeah. really sure how to read that, Marcus. Tread lightly. I, let, it's yeah. London stuff. My friend Dan does the same way. <laughs> just play with you, Alex. It's not gay if it's in a three-way. It's a good reminder. Please join Apostate Alex and I Thursday at 2 p.m. We'll be streaming from both channels. And it's called... Love it's you kinda, guys. Yeah, they love you, too, Marcus. They um, We're going to be riffing off is Scientology all bad? Questions unanswered. And then we're not pro Scientology. So don't take that intriguing Andrew Gold clickbait title wrongly. We're just doing it because there's some residuals that come over. There are some gains that you get out of Scientology, but aren't um, necessarily Scientology related. Think about it like going through the war and then you come back and you get out of it and you survive it. There can be gains at least from that. You know? Yeah, of course. He comes back at the end of the stream. He thinks he can. He even has the wrench, Goldie. My you know, Goldie, you do all the work. Tish, Somehow amazing. You... It was amazing to see you. Oh, Tish. it's really good to see her. Goldie, thanks again for all your work. Apostate Alex has the wrench, and he thinks he can just sneak back here in the last five minutes, and everything will be fine. Thank you. <laughs> Alex, we're going to have to start censoring your comments. No, brother. so suck my dick Saturdays is not a thing. I don't think that's going to work, even though Alex is clearly, clearly pushing for it. Well, the that over was, no, you were the one pushing for no, it. No, I was not. I think oh, this is a fuck. great point to end, young Liar. man.